everybody happy friday cheers to you <sighs> cheers to gomer kyle and super saiyan joku who are here cheers to you motherfuckers happy friday let me hit it for the motherfuckers here's for super saiyan joku who's here i want to have the world the world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft <laughs> Let me hit it for Gomer Kyle, who's also here. Oh my god. Uh. Oh yeah, I have to press. I got a new keyboard, so I gotta press some buttons here to make this work. Let me see. What's your name, scumbag? You Gomer Kyle. Private Pile, I'm gonna give you three seconds. To wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! Alright, excuse me for that, but I gotta be, uh, I didn't put stuff on my new keyboard. My new keyboard's fucking badass. Uh, I dropped a beer on the last one, so it stopped working, and I had to go buy a new one. And I bought this really, really small, thin Logitech. But because it's missing keys, you gotta press like shift something to ch to use some of these. And shit. So yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers, Gomer and Super Saiyan Joku. Hope you guys had a good week. I've had a shitty week, but you know that's what it's like living in Joe Biden's America, run by the Democrats and a bunch of fucking homosexual liberals. All right. That's the way it is. We got to put up with it. All right. Vote. It's very important to vote for people who are not dumb as fuck. Maybe things will get better. We'll see. We got to wait until November. Don't cause any riots. Don't burn buildings. Don't be a sore loser. And don't be sending in mails by, by fucking mail. You idiots. Your votes by mail. That's cheating. You dicks. That's what happened last time. Anyways. Uh, cheers, y'all. Uh, fucking, uh, word of advice or whatever, whatever it's called. Uh, we do have three channels at the moment. This is the Underground Broadcast. Right now, we are broadcasting from the Emergency Underground Broadcast. I think we have, like, a month and a half left from our ban. And then we can finally stream from the original Underground Broadcast. And maybe get some more people up in this bitch alive. But until then, we're doing it from this other one. And shit. Emergency for the moment. You know what that's like. Uh, we do have the illegal underground broadcast channel where we broadcast pay per views live, mostly wrestling pay per views, WWE and AEW. Now, uh, I'm not going to watch Backlash tomorrow because those dumbasses decided to go to France. And uh, and they're, they're going to show it like at 10 a.m., 11 a.m. I'm working. Sons of bitches. I gotta get make, make money. You know, maybe if this was another economy run by by more competent people, I could afford to have two, three days off in a row, maybe? I don't know. But the way things are going, I gotta work all the time. No rent's gonna go up. Can't buy eggs and cheese and shit. Fuck you. It's the way it is. God damn it. I don't even know why I do this podcast. I just come on here and fucking get mad all the time. You sons of bitches. Pissing me off. Anyway, subscribe and all that ass. I don't know what else to do. I'm not going to beg none of y'all motherfuckers. You either like this or you don't. That's what it is. Cheers. Anyways. 
Let's move on. Actually, no, I, I forgot. I always tell you tonight's show. We got a lot of ass, like always. They're going to review the Knuckle show as well as X Men 97. We got a lot of the fucking uh, Marvel leaks and DC ass for you, James Gunn, of course. And of course, we got a lot of celebrity bullshit. The Yeezy. You know what that is all about. So let's get this show on the road for you, motherfuckers. Uh, at Twitter. Handles at Sonamana665, Instagram at The Underground Broadcast, and at The Underground Broadcast for a TikTok, which I don't think it's going to be there for much longer. I don't even know why I'm uploading videos. We were banned from TikTok too. Two of my videos this week, they sent me an email saying they, they muted them. You know what? What do you mean you muted? Oh, they, we don't like what you're saying. But we're going to leave the video up. It's just not going to have any sound. I talk in all my videos. The things that I say is the point in my videos. And you're going to mute me? Well, fuck you. I don't have subtitles on my shit to come out and people know what I'm saying. You idiots. Have you any idea how long, how hard I had to work to fucking make a, a, a one minute video, upload it. And now you want me to put the letters because you're going to mute me? Fuck you, TikTok, you fucking Chinese communist sons of bitches. You know what happens when Joe Biden takes over America? You're going to be censored for everything. You cannot say nothing. They're going to mute you in your videos. You post in your social medias. Fuck you. I'm glad they're banning Twitter and getting the fuck out of here. Or TikTok. We don't want it. Piece of shit. Anyways, you can subscribe if you want. I don't really give a fuck. I'm getting angry, you guys. The show just started. God damn it. Fuck TikTok. Uh, anyways, whatever you send me, social media, so I'll post up here and shit. Like a good friend, Goma Kyle, sent me something this week. He sent me his wife, got him this badass fucking uh, Army of Darkness. Fucking, uh, uh, what's this guy's name? Jim Carrey? No, what's his name? Bruce Campbell. Uh, he said, this is my boomstick and shit. That's like the best one. I love the Evil Dead. I, I had them all on DVDs. I really liked them. Uh, the new ones are okay. I mean, they're 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 kind of disgusting and shit. Uh, I mean, there's a girl who gets a knife and goes starts cutting her own tongue and shit. But uh, I don't know. I really like uh, the original ones. They're so cool. The first one's kind of silly. Yeah, and this the second one's actually the second one's sillier than the first. The first one's more serious. The second one's sillier. And then the third one, which is my favorite, is just uh, just completely whacked out. Uh, but I really, really like it. That's a cool shirt, Gomer. I'm jealous. He also sent me a picture of the full moon this week with chemtrails at night. Those sons of bitches. As if poisoning us during the early mornings. Every goddamn Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday isn't enough. They gotta do it at night, too. Fuck you. You get sick and tired. You know, the other day I had to door open and shit because it was really cool for the first time in a while. So I didn't have to turn on my AC for once. For one day only, I got to save electricity, save some money in my pocket. Fuck you, Joe Biden. Just got to save some money. I had the door open. And I heard the loudest fucking sonic boom. It sounded like fucking Rodan was flying right outside my fucking apartment. The window shook. And it was, everything was vibrating. My dog was freaking out. I go outside and of course it's nighttime. It's pitch dark. I'm looking at the sky. You can't see shit. You're flying the Aurora, the brand new fucking Aurora, Aurora. That motherfucker can go like from zero to a million miles an hour in a second and shit. And it's camouflage. You can't see it, and it fucking, it's, it's ready to blow up the earth, drop bombs everywhere, nukes everywhere, and they're testing it out. I think that's what they call it, the Aurora, and shit. I, I, I want to see it, but they only fly it at night. The camouflage, they use that shit that the Avengers have. All of a sudden, it disappears and shit. Tony Stark. Uh, what's it called, that, that, uh, Boeing? No, it's not Boeing. L Lockheed Martin. Over there by the base, a lot of motherfuckers, a lot of the rich white motherfuckers work there. Illuminati, they're building this shit with our tax dollars. They're just trying to find better ways to destroy the earth faster with bombs and shit and your money. Anyways, yeah, go my stay indoors, try not to breathe the air, okay? 
Word of advice. Be careful. Don't breathe there. It's dangerous. Cheers, Gomer. Thank you for sending me that. Go to, to social media. I was had another woke pack member. Super Saiyan Joku sent me this earlier today on the Instagram. He said, I'm going to try this Jello edible shit and cocaine in a can. Slimy yet satisfying. Oh, yeah. Smoking up and got the munchies ready for tonight's show at the Underground Broadcast. Son of man, I'll see you soon. Cheers, my flowers. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag THC 400 milligrams. Hashtag Mary Jane. Oh, yeah. That weed you have looks exactly. Well, actually, no, I was going to say it kind of looks like the one I have, but the one I currently have. Oh, my God, it's so beautiful. Look at this shit. It's got green and orange hairs all over it. It's fucking beautiful, man. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, it's the best. I told my guy. Hey, next time you get some more of this, you let me know. I'll come over here. I'll suck your dick. <laughs> I just want some more. He said he called me when he gets some shit. Cocaine in a can? That's some crazy. Why is it spicy? I don't think I would ever want to drink something that says it's cocaine in a can, and yet it's spicy. I mean, a spicy drink? I don't know. I could drink that and shit. Was it a Bloody Mary or a motherfucking, what's it called? A Michelada and shit. I don't think I'm going to have a spicy Red Bull. That's crazy. Uh, those are some good munchies, motherfucker. Uh, you got you got some good munchies there. What you got? Let me see what you get right here. Some popcorn, some cinnamon rolls, and is that cereal? I think that was cereal. What is the cereal? Let me see. Tony the Tiger. That is cereal. Why do you have Tony the Tiger cereal? <laughs> You're just gonna eat cornflakes, you crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Jello edible shit. That's fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. Dollar store food is the best. You know? That's where every hardworking American shops nowadays. God damn it. Even the suburban mothers are, are downgrading from Walmart to the dollar store. That's how hard the economy is right now. I'm seeing white ladies with blonde hair and blue eyes shopping at the fucking dollar store. I'm like, lady, the Walmart's over there. Leave the brown people over here. It's too expensive. Uh, fuck you. Coming into my store, bitch. You better wear something. You better wear something skimpier if you're gonna be up in this bitch. See that fat lady over there with that thong? That's the way you gotta come in here. You are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She called the cops on me. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, Joker. Thank you for sending me this shit. I'ma smoke this one up for you, motherfucker. <sighs> it really has been a shitty week, but I gotta tell you. Being here on a Friday night makes it worth it. Cheers to you all. And remember, live. Motherfuckers, cheers. <sighs> all right, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've become more lactose intolerant or whatever as I got an older, uh, you know, I hardly drink milk nowadays. <laughs> but anyways, uh, let's get started with the motherfucking comments. Reading the comments for y'all. And the first comment, oh, it's none other than our resident Canuck. Let me hit it for this guy. You know, I just realized I put a, I got this new keyboard and I don't even know uh, what numbers some of these guys are. I mean, I know Gomer and, <laughs> and Indy Phantom, these uh, motherfuckers uh, commented earlier 
Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna know what they're no what to play their music and shit. I'm gonna see if I have it here written down somewhere. I might have to go pick up the other keyboard from the trash to 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 read it and shit. You sons of bitches. Yeah, I don't I don't have it here. God damn it! You see what you all do, hombre? Oh, Spilling beer all over my keyboard, losing all the settings and the numbers. I'm gonna have to guess in a little while. It's probably six or seven, some shit like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Anyways, Indie Phantom on the podcast radio says, Oh, yeah, you're getting close to 600 subs. Yeah, we're at 595. That's the closest we've ever been. I'm telling you, it was the racism's. Of he who should not be named that was holding us back. Because ever since that son of a bitch left. We've been getting skyrocketing to the top. We're going to be famous by the end of this fucking month. That motherfucker's no longer here. It was. That was fast as fuck he says. It was. Ever since that son of a bitch left like I said. He said. Nah son. Superman 3 is slightly the woke one with Richard Pryor. Not nuclear man. Bullshit. It's the one where Superman fights his evil twin. It's pretty dope. J James Gunn will never come close to the Christopher Reeves legacy. Cheers. Cheers. That's actually the one Superman movie I don't like. The one with Richard Pryor. It's lame as fuck. Like, you expect me to believe Richard Pryor's like some kind of fucking genius and knows like all these like science and equations and shit. Uh, gambling and shit. Codes and shit. It's fucking bullshit. And then the whole thing about Superman. He didn't want to be Superman. Then he, he splits into two. And then the other Superman's all like. It's crazy. The little boy. Come meet my mom. The Superman's being a dick. And he's going to like fuck his mom. <laughs> it's so crazy, bro. I remember that, that movie. I didn't like it, though. I, I don't like that one. Uh, but I remember it. Uh, James Gunn will never, never come close to anything. <laughs> Get a sippy cup. We need to invent one. A sippy cup would be good for the beer. It could go down a little smoother because I'm always burping and getting gas and, and uh, enteritis and shit. Uh, so it'll definitely help. That's a good, good idea, Gomer Kyle. Got to patent that shit. Adult sippy cups. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, any Phantom. Thank you for commenting. You Canuck. Oh shit. I'm knocking shit down left and right, fellas. Let me move this out of the way. Put you over there. There you go. My lizard. I'll bring him out later. Anyways. Uh, he commented again. And he says, P.S. Greta Thunberg did not direct Barbie. How dare you? It was Greta Gerwig who does all these wokey woke feminine flicks. Margot Robbie kind of sucked as Barbie, to be honest. Cheers time. Um, I don't know why you. Oh, cheers time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know what her name is. Greta Gerwig or what? Durnberg. I don't know. There's a lot of fucking Gerdas out there. There's a one in Harry Potter, and there's a probably a million of them over there in England and shit. What? There, what an American Idol, little fucking little ugly little girl or lady. Who won and shit? I don't remember. There's a lot of Gretas out there. I'm sorry I mispronounced their names or whatever the fuck. All I know is that they directed Barbie and, and some. I don't even know what I don't even know what I said. Indie Phantom. I don't even know why you even brought this up if I don't even remember what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I don't know what I said. Greta Thunberg, uh, Gerwig. Hey, fuck all this. We're moving on. It's been five days. Six days ago, in the Phantom, trying to remind me of shit I don't remember. <laughs> Cheers, motherfucker. It helps you out put a timestamp and you see what I what happened or what I said, because I don't fucking know. The cunt. Oh, let me hit it for him. I think I do know this guy. I think this guy is this one. I beat this one. No. Oh, shit. He's this one. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. 
So get your slob ready, because the cunt is here. All right. I should have known, because number three is my favorite. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No favorites, no favorites, I'm just saying. No homo, I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways, the cut says, on the Red Hulk in the MCU spoilers, the picture they showed. We got another picture tonight, fellas. But he says, ha, 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 Ebola AIDS Hulk. Instead of gamma radiation, it was STDs that mutated him. <laughs> Harrison Ford got STDs. 82-year-old, 83-year-old Harrison Ford got STDs from a fucking uh, Nigerian prostitute while they were filming this movie in South Africa. Ah, that's fucked up, bro. Cheers! The cunt. We miss you. Motherfucker's probably asleep right now. Oh, a new person? Jess Rivers, DK3ZJ, on the podcast video. Um, they put a they put a timestamp, but they say wise words by the weirdest dot 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 a uh, man question mark I've ever seen. All right, I'll, I'll I'll address your little comment, but let me see what the what 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 timestamp you put here. Dude, I thought about wearing the fake eyelashes, but they just don't look that good. I'm sorry, I mean, really don't unless you're a stripper. You have no business wearing fake eyelashes. That's all I'm gonna say. Unless you're a stripper or a porn star, you shouldn't be wearing fake eyelashes. Cars. That's true. Unless you're a stripper or a porn star, you have no business wearing that fake shit on your fucking face. You dumbass. Women. Uh, so Jess River says the wise words by the weirdest man? Question mark I've ever seen. Yes. This is a man with a penis. Just likes to identify, uh, identify, identify as a transsexual female. There you go. Not binary. Sometimes on a Wednesday night. All right. Any other night, it's all game. Cheers. All right. Thank you, Jess, for commenting. Anthony Timmons, a motherfucking hog. On the Rebel Wilson, expo Rebel Wilson exposes Hollywood elite video. I never liked her anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked her a lot. She was fat. I don't like her anymore. I don't think anyone does. Nah. <laughs> Cheers, Timmons. Thank you for commenting. Here's where it's going to get into the guessing game, fellas, because here we go with Doug on Funny. And I said, like, I'm going to try to memorize who, who, what these numbers are. I think he's number five. Let's see. No. Then he's got to be six. Fuck. All right. Sorry. <laughs> I have to write this shit down somewhere. I had the other keyboard. I had the, 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 the words there and everything. I don't have it on this one. There is one two. No. No. There he is. Woke as fuck. Ah, it's embarrassing. There's so many woke pack members. Some of your motherfuckers don't even show up anymore, and I'm still clicking your ass. Sons of bitches. <laughs> uh, Doug on Funny says. And the Alec Baldwin continues his Zionistic ways. This is a perfect example of how these leftists are nowadays. They will quickly condemn their own peers. If their views suddenly don't align with the majority. I remember when the left defended Israel and labeled everyone else as terrorists. Oh, how the world has changed. Tears, son of man. Hashtag. Whoa. Uh, I'll say one thing. I was spewing the Muslim rhetoric way before 9-11, motherfucker. Before it was cool. All right. Whenever 9-11 happened, I was chastised. People were saying, like, hey, don't be saying that Muslim shit. You're going to fucking 
You're going to get arrested? They're telling me you're going to be thrown in a camp or something. You're talking all that mus that nonsense about Jesus and the Muslim and all this ass. And like, fuck you. And, uh, and yeah, people were mad. And then like, uh, whenever I listen to System of a Down or had a System of a Down shirt, everybody, hey, get those fucking um, terrorists. Get, get, get that shit out of here. I'm like, fuck you. You know? So I was doing it before the fucking left thought it was cool. All of a sudden, they flip sides. It's true. A few years ago, they used to be all pro-Israel and all this government ass and save the Jews. And now it's all like they want to murder all the Jews. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. We're going to talk about some of that tonight during the pop culture for some of you motherfuckers. Uh, but yeah, it's just uh, the left is the weirdest place. They've turned on, on themselves all the time. And not only that, but they've flipped their own views all the time. You know, and shit. They don't, they don't even know what they believe in anymore. That's a, that's the truth. You know? At least the, the right. At least they still stay true to whatever the fuck bullshit they, they believe in. Some fucking don't look at porn or whatever. Don't masturbate and all that ass. Don't hold hands. All that shit. You know? They haven't changed. You know, these motherfuckers, they're so confused about uh, men and women and shit. They don't even know what the fuck they believe in anymore. How the fuck are they even a working party? You know, that's why the president is the way he is, and their the, the economy, and the government, and everything. Dumbasses. Fuck the left. You know, that's what the, the music, everybody, I knew, remember back in the, in the, in the 2000s, this conspiracy, and it's true. You go back and you listen to the music. People used to say to the left, and the left side, and left this, and to the left, to the left, to the left. It was in all the songs. And everybody, I, I knew what they were doing. They're trying to change the mindsets of the fucking poor, fucking... Milan little youngsters growing up the zoomers to the left to the left here we are to the left look at the shape of the country now you idiots go away cheers dog i'm funny <sighs> oh canceled for life and Oh, we just fucking caught this motherfucker. Doug, I'm funny, you son of a bitch. We caught one of your fake accounts. I think we just realized you were actually canceled for live because it says Doug Unfunny 9630. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this guy made a fake account. No wonder we got new subscribers, but we don't get more views, you son of a bitch. Thank you for that. <laughs> but let me hit it for your fake account, since your fake account has been a woke pack member, you dick. <laughs> uh, where is he? I think he's, uh, he's canceled for life, right? So canceled for life is this one. What do you call a hundred black men buried in the ground up to their neck? What? Afro turf. So no. How do we know that Adam and Eve uh, weren't black? Oh. You ever try to take a rib away from a black man? Okay, what, 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 are, what are three things that a black man can't get? A black guy, a fat lip, and a job. <laughs> I told you I'm gonna kick this boy. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. I wonder what they did. You racist. Hey, you know what? I just realized it. The YouTube's fucking up. Because I just refreshed it. And it is dug on funny. I'm confused. I think because the next, the next, the next comment is canceled for life. And the avatar changed. I'm thinking the YouTube fucked up. That's weird. It made it seem like you were canceled for life there for a few seconds. You see that? It changed. This is the fucking... You see? You're fucking with us. You're fucking with this channel from the start. Doug I'm funny. you let me know if that's you or not. Or if you have a fake account or Doug I'm funny. Because look, it's, it's reverted back. You all see it. I'm not fucking paranoid. There it is right there. I think the YouTube fucked up, and for some strange reason, it moved the avatar from up here and it moved it down here for that second. 
and it made me think that that was canceled for life. So I'm sorry. Doug, I'm funny. I played your, your intro because I thought it was you. Uh, canceled for life. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Or who's who? Fuck you, YouTube. This channel's constantly getting sabotaged by YouTube and their affiliates and shit. Goddamn Joe Biden lovers. Anyways, Doug Unfunny, not canceled for life. He wrote on the Nightcrawler got retconned. Wow, talk about forced wokeness. I had no idea they had done that in the comics. Idiotic. It's like you said, it would make more sense. He's a Sazel's son due to the likeness and powers they both share. Marvel Comics is dead. He did get someone who replied to him. I usually don't read replies, but I'm kind of interested what this nerd said. Darth E. Cool One. Edit. I just now actually read the description. Four. Just had to argue this much, but I'll leave this here. This was the original intent from Chris Claremont, the best and most famous X-Men creator besides Hickman. Oh, I love Jonathan Hickman. He's the best one. And all the things you like about X-Men were made by him and were incredibly careful with the retcon to say basically Azazel unknowingly did imprint part of his essence onto Kurt. So it's more of a three-way split of being the parent. So every story still counts. He's just more like Hal's the... Asari in Mass Effects used their partner's genetic code to alter, alter some things while it not literally being a direct sperm in the egg. Also, X-23 and Miranda Lawson from Mass Effects and Cammy from Street Fighter all are famous and are female clones of men. Oh yeah, Cammy is of Ken, I think. It's superbly Connor Kent suddenly woke because he has the son of Lex Luthor and Clark via cloning. Cloning has nothing to do with it. Like, they literally said Mystique impregnated herself. They didn't, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, obviously, this nerd has all the fucking com more comic books than me. All I know is that I just read the one where they explained briefly, not into this much detail, that, uh, Mystique impregnated herself and Azazel really was not Nightcrawler's son, which to me didn't make no sense. But according to this nerd here, He's saying that he gave, so, I don't know, when his dick was inside of Mystique, he gave her some of the powers, I guess. I don't know. It sounds like a bunch of forced woke shit to me. Darth Equal One. That's all I'm going to say. Cheers. And thank you for replying to Doug Unfunny and being on this channel. Cheers. <laughs> uh, let me see. Now, it's canceled for life, Culture War Bandit 99. I'm going to play his intro again because he fucked up in the other one. It wasn't him. It was Doug Unfunny. The fucking shit's fucking up. But here we go. What do you call a hundred black men buried in the ground up to their neck? What? Afro turf. So another. How do we know that Adam and Eve uh, weren't black? Oh. You ever try to take a rib away from a black man? Okay, what, 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 are, what are three things that a black man can't get? A black eye, a fat lip, and a job. I told you, I'm gonna kick this boy. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. I wonder what they did. You racist. You know, I've never seen that movie. And, uh... I should download it. It's got Bernie Mac in it. I think I have every Bernie Mac movie. My favorite one is the one with Samuel L. Jackson. Soul Men. Oh my god, I've never... The profanity in that movie is beautiful. <laughs> every two words is fuck you. N-word. Motherfucker. <laughs> Shit like that. Um, so I, I, I think I'm gonna... I, I forget what this one's called. Son-in-law or... Or the in-laws, I don't know, Ashton Kutcher is dating the black daughter, and she takes them to go see them. And shit. Bernie Max the dad. Uh, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta remember to download that one. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Culture World Bandit, uh, Cancel for Life says, Son, it sounds like someone took your advice 
Weinstein was hospitalized after being released by prison. LOL, cheers. Oh, it's because I was saying that. Why the fuck are you idiots out there running up to little old Asian women and punching them and knocking them unconscious and then running away for no reason? Just random fucking old Asian people. Fuck you, do it to Weinstein, you sons of bitches. He's the one who deserves to get punched, and then you run away. Make sure he gets concussed on the way down to the floor. And before his head hits the ground, concuss him already. So when his head impacts on the concrete, it'll be a double concussion. That's how hard you have to hit that son of a bitch. Um, yeah. Now, I don't know if somebody actually did that, but he did wound up. He was hospitalized, they said, as soon as he was released from prison. You know, maybe the, the fresh air of freedom. He got too excited because, oh, I'm going to get to rape and molest women again. And, and he had a heart attack or something. He got too excited. His blood pressure went up. And he had to go get hospitalized. Uh, It's pretty serious, y'all. It's pretty serious. I'm not going to cover any of that ass tonight because, unfortunately, he didn't die. I was kind of hoping he did. <laughs> uh, but anyways, here's another uh public service announcement to everybody out there. If you did it, if you weren't the one who punched him and sent him to a hospital, make sure you go back to the hospital right now while he's hospitalized and finish the job. Get it done right. Go up to his hospital bed, put a fucking pillow over his head while he's sleeping, or punch him in the stomach and shit, or rip out his IV and his fucking oxygen tube. Do it. I didn't tell you to do it. I was just fantasizing, saying to tell you to do it. But it was a fantasy, right? Anyways, cheers, canceled for life. Guess who? He says so man was Gomer Kyle says so man was in Bernie Mac's last movie. It was his last movie. I remember because it said at the end of the credits and they showed all the outtakes. It was badass. I stayed at the movie theaters and watched all the outtakes and shit. Um, and he says, guess who is the one with Ashton Kutcher? I gotta download it. Even though Ashton Kutcher is kind of a child molester himself. I don't, show, I don't know if I should. I mean, downloading it, I'm not really supporting it. I'm not paying for it. So, you know, you know I don't have to feel, feel bad about it. But I wouldn't buy it. It's got a pervert on it. Anyways. Anthony Timmons on the Ozempic epidemic is spreading. He says, I thought they all looked that way. Zombie would. Well, they always did look kind of morbid. But now, with the Ozempic, they look like ghouls. They look like skin attached to fucking skeletons. Like husks, empty husks. They really do. You know, Christ wasn't lying when he said the dead will rise and walk again. Yeah, we're seeing it right now in Hollywood. All these fall fuckers should be dead right now, but something's keeping them alive. The contract with the devil and shit. Cheers, Timmons. Thank you for commenting. Indie Phantom and the Nightcrawler got retcon. He says, oh, yeah. I can't remember if I commented this week, but I just wanted to say that Nightcrawler in X2 was woke as fuck, played by Alan Cummings. Terrible last name for a dude, he says. I know. And I knew, I knew back then when they, when, when, when I saw him, I'm like, ah, that's Alan Cummings. That's like, cause me, I mean, even back then before the wokeness started, I was already like up to date, you know, with like if Ezra Miller would have been in Hollywood back then, I would have been all over it and shit, you know, back then when he wasn't a criminal and shit and, and wasn't misrepresenting a movement, D idiot took us back 20 years with his bullshit. Anyways, um, I would have been all over it. But I was all over Alan Cummings. I said, oh, yeah, I didn't woke guys fuck motherfucker Nightcrawler. I remember he went on the Tonight Show to, to represent X2 when it was out and doing the interviews and shit. He came out with these pants that were like not even below his ankles. You could see his ankles because they were up like that. And he was wearing loafers with no socks. 
And he, he crossed his legs like that and they look woke as fuck. You saw his exposed ankle and his little loafers and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he got a little vest on. It was all like, like little flowers on his vest and shit. He looked pimp as fuck. He looked pimp as fuck. I like Cummings. I like Adam Cummings. He's a good guy. I will say, I did not, I did not like his accent in uh in uh as nightcrawler or the teeth i think it was the teeth that was not letting him talk correctly or something it sounded like a, he had a lisp or something i liked him in golden eye he was badass in golden eye and i remember the the password was was chair the chick thought it was something perverted like ass or booty <laughs> and then the bonds all like what's the password what's another word for for ass he goes what do you mean yeah something you sit on and he's like chair Bing. <laughs> like for the first time alan cumming wasn't being a pervert <laughs> it was just a chair that was a funny uh, golden eye i don't know y'all remember i love golden eye. that's my favorite bond movie golden eye is that the sexiest women golden eye the bad guy was super hot i forget who the chick was that was in that too she was hot too there's another girl golden eye is a good one i like golden eye that's all i'm gonna say chairs The teeth were very fucked up on Nightcrawler. I didn't like him. And I'm telling you, he couldn't speak well. It's like, like Ben, ben Middleson in uh, playing Talos, the scroll, with those teeth. You, can, you can't even talk right. Like, motherfucker, you CGI the shit out of every movie. CGI the teeth on the motherfucker. Let the actor speak right so you can hear and pronounce the words correctly. Marvel's a bunch of fucking idiots sometimes, man. I swear to God. I gotta get another beer for this. Cheers, indeed. I never saw Josie and the Pussycats, Gomer. Uh, that sounds like a movie I should have seen, though. They're like the perfect movie for me. I need to download that. I gotta write it down. Because that's like right up my world. That and Spice. I, I mean, I know I have, I have Spice World. Oh, yeah, but I gotta download Josie and the Pussycats. That woke ass fuck chick that came out in that, uh, she's all that was in Josie and the Pussycats, I think. I forget what that chick's name is. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, there, they're, they're written down, and I'm downloading them with my VPN, Windscribe VPN. Cheers, Jack Sparrow Bay. All right, all right, let's move on. Anthony Timmons. On the Tory spelling wears diapers. He says, What a mess. Another Hollywood weirdo. Well, she's always been part of the weirdos in Hollywood. And she's always been a mess. You know? And they just, they just, you crave that riches and fame and shit and the attention. That's what, that's what this is. Anyways. All right. Anyway, cheers, Timmons. Thank you. Thank you. Timmons becoming a regular. I'm getting the National Weather Service alert right now. You can't hear it because I have a compressor on the microphone. Oh, yeah, I'm getting better at this. But I'm telling you, there's a thunderstorm warning and tornadoes all across my area until 8, 11 p.m. Shit. Effective until 941. All the floods over there from fucking Houston, Texas. They're coming over here to fuck my area up. That's crazy. All right, you guys, I hope we don't lose broadcast while we're doing this. Let's keep this moving. Cheers, Timmons. Thank you for commenting. Whoa! Out of fucking outer space, it's none other than Jitsimus Prime. <laughs> and you know how we do when we do what it is that we do on this channel. So let me fucking play Jistimus fucking intro and shit. You cut it really, you cut it really short, Jistimus. Let me just see. remind everybody. If I do special shit for you, like this that I'm about to do, and that includes sending me stuff for me to show on your social medias. Don't send it to me an hour, forty minutes, or even fifteen minutes before the show, because I, I sometimes I get I get home from work late. And I don't have time to do this shit. Y'all are lucky I rushed through this, but I was able to do this on time. It ass. You know? It helps if you do it during the week. I'm prepared. You'll do, do it right away at the end. Gotta rush. 
But anyways, did some ads. Don't worry, I was able to do this. So let's hear you read your comment to us from a galaxy far, far away. Greetings, Wokest Dude. Your impression of me was great, but it sounded like I had a little too much energon to consume. Well, according to what my fellow bot Liltron said. Anyway, your show was fresh and great, but I do have this one question. Why did you call me a dick? I'm confused because by the definition of what your governments have put in the World Wide Web, it means I'm a walking phallus. I hope we can get past this because in reality it makes zero sense due to me not even being made of flesh. I hate that I wasted time with this subject besides talking about one of our epic adventures. Well, please forgive me if I went too hard on you. I'm still learning your customs. Well, till next time. Till all are one. Hashtag woke pack for life. Oh, yeah. Live. You're from space and other galaxies. Fucking aliens represent our gang here on the woke pack right here, motherfuckers. Um, I called you a dick. Meaning like, uh, don't be an asshole. Shit. Actually, I think that will confuse you too. You're gonna, you're gonna wonder why I'm calling you a fucking asshole. Um, it's just like playing around, you dumbass. I don't think you're gonna understand that one either, dumbass. Fuck. Uh... You're asking the wrong person to explain this. The smart guy doesn't is not here anymore. <laughs> Look, it's just me giving you a nickname, a play around nickname. All right, your nickname is just like dick and shit. You know, just like kind of saying, you know, like your ass. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I was never good at English or grammar in, in middle school or high school. All right, and I didn't go to college. Uh, I don't know how to explain it to you. It's just, don't worry. It's not a bad thing. You're not an actual, you're not an actual dick. And just like a nickname I'm giving you. But I can give you several nicknames like asshole or pussy or cunt or fucker or you piece of shit. But I like dick or you bitch. <laughs> asshole. There's a lot of nicknames I can give you. It's just a nickname, just a Miss Prime. That's all it is. It's just a nickname. You know, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But anyways, I understand that the, the AI is obviously not as good as an actual fucking robot. Because unfortunately, the robots' AIs that are here in America or in the, in the, in the Earth were made by humans. You were made... Well, we don't know why the fuck you were made by the spark of life, whatever the fuck that is, and a bunch of machines that were uh, a hunk of junk that was put together, and a little thing floated in you, and you became alive. That's how the comics say. I don't know. You tell me, explain me that shit. Who the fuck made you? All right, because in our shit, so you gotta fuck somebody and put sperm inside a vagina to make some eggs. Well, trans people might fucking, you know, have their own little thing about that. They might say that's not true, but, you know. Oh, yeah, we're all going to hell. Oh, well. Cheers, Jetsamits! We'll catch you next time, motherfucker. Anyways, let's keep going. Oh, yeah! Gomer Kyle on the Ozempic epidemic is spreading. He says... Like I said on the Tory Spelling video, it's just narcissism of Hollywood. These idiots are passing these trends to their children, yeah. So they can become fake and more plastic, what the fuck? Hashtag. Anyways, happy May the 4th. Cheers! Man, May the 4th used to be so cool. Um, and then Disney took it over. And shit. But anyways, uh, actually, you know, I'm gonna say one thing. Go and download your Fortnite, Lego Fortnite. There's Star Wars all over Fortnite right now, and it's badass. I was playing for a little bit when I got out of work, uh, which is why I wasn't prepared for the podcast because I should have been doing stuff. But I was playing <laughs> the video games instead. All right, sue me. I'm gonna have some kind of joy in my life. He's not just fucking putting up with Joe Biden and the ass he's feeding me every goddamn day. The prices, the gas. 
Fuck all that. No raise at work. Shitty hours. Bullshit pay. Nobody tips you. Fuck you. Joe Biden. Anyways. Cheers, Gomer. Thank you for that. I'm getting ready for when I run for president in 10 more years. That's why I'm going like this, y'all. When I talk and shit. So you know that I mean it, motherfuckers. Anyways. Oh, let me make sure this is the last comment, this son of a bitch. It is, it is. All right, let me give him a like and a little heart. Oh, <laughs> but it's none other than Houston Tejason, Jose Tevino. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Oh, yeah. Me tienes envidia, puto. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Jose Trevino, straight from Houston, Texas. I think I hope you're okay, motherfucker. You're not getting flooded or haven't been evacuated over there. Stay safe. Uh, he says on the comment video. Uh, oh shit, sorry, pressing all the wrong buttons. Here we go. What up, gay? I mean, effing guy, you. Now I feel bad talking about Kenny Omega, but maybe you should feel bad too, son, about talking about Fat Falcon. Maybe he got a disease too, and here you're talking about these diseases, burger eating fat fucks. Anyways, you're right about that simp Zack Snyder. He can't write a story worth a damn. When I saw the trailer to Rebel Moon, I just thought of more boss girl power crap. Boring. Cheers. Woke pack, East Sun. Cheers. Hashtag woke pack. Hashtag. Oh, wait. Hashtag. World order. Oh, yeah. Oh. We're going to talk more about Fat Anthony Mackie. And now he doesn't have no disease because the motherfucker keeps eating his ways. Son of a bitch. All right. Uh, if he if he wanted to, he'd be in, he would look like Michael B. Jordan right now. Or Kanga Conquer. Son of a bitch. That motherfucker just likes going out to eat at Chili's every night. Going over there to Outback. Having that, that onion. The blooming onion and shit. That's all he. That's all. That's that's, that's the life he lives. The Hollywood fucking going out chilling. Fuck you. You gonna go to the gym three hours in the morning, one hour in the midday, and three hours at night. Son of a bitch. That's what Chris Evans did. Chris Hemsworth. All the motherfuckers. Superman. The real Superman. Henry Cavill. Fuck even Affleck got pumped to be Batman for fuck's sakes. Mackie's just gonna sit on his ass, drink beer, and fucking toast every night over there at fucking Chili's and Applebee's. Fuck you, Mackie. We'll talk about more of that tonight. Joe Cool. Bringing it up. Bringing up subjects for the podcast. They're gonna come out later. Bringing up early. Fucking guy. Cheers, Joe Cool. I love you. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for commenting. You make this fucking channel with your bullshit. Uh, I don't know what this shit is saying. Something about errors. Anyways, I just closed it. Remember? Oh, Jose Trevino's here! I got hit for this dick again! Repites tu nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Oh, yeah. Envidia, puto. Cheers, Trevino. Stay safe, you motherfucker. Just letting you know, representing all the way from Houston, Texas, East Town, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. I represent all you motherfuckers. The woke pack for life. You know what it is. Pressing all these buttons, man, I swear to God, it's fucking up the channel, but it's okay. I do it for y'all. 
Appreciate you there. Why are you for commenting? Like I said, you make the comments. Send me stuff to my social media. Fuck TikTok. We're done with the shit. Oh, I appreciate you, you motherfuckers. On the real. All right. Let's get this show on the road. We're done with the goddamn comments. And let's move into your weekly pop culture breakdown. And this week, we're going to start with something, someone, a little bit unexpected. But this week, none other than woke as fuck Jeff Goldblum is making headlines. And not for being too fucking woke, even for the leftists. All right? Because even they said, hey, tone it down, motherfucker. You're being too eccentric with those glasses and the shiny fucking suit. He don't give a fuck. He's Jeff Goldblum. You bitches. No, that's not why he's making headlines. Apparently, he has come out in a recent interview and has said that he is very happy being a father. Fatherhood. He's finally experiencing it. Raising kids. And he has come out and he says his two sons, Charlie, who is eight, and River, who is six. He has told them already that they will have to row their own fucking boat in life. Motherfuckers, you're going to have to get jobs as soon as you're able to wipe your own ass. And start paying the light bill or something. You sons of bitches. Just because daddy is rich and fucking flamboyant as fuck does not mean you're getting a free ride in life. <sighs> this son of a bitch. You know what he sounds like? He sounds just like he who should not be named. Fucking dickhead. Talking about, let me teach my kids a lesson to be responsible and fuck you. You're rich as fuck, you son of a bitch. You better make sure that I live the life of a privileged white Hollywood Nepo baby. You dick. How dare you tell my... That's, this is me if I was his sons. How dare you tell me to fucking get a job and shit. Fuck you. You're in Hollywood, you're rich as fuck. I deserve everything without ever having to work for it. Just like everyone else. Look at Hailey Bieber and all Kardashians and the rest of all those, they're untalented motherfuckers. All right? I want to live their fucking lives. How dare you, dad? Tell me that I got to go work like one of these assholes down there in the middle class. Fuck you. I'm working a job every day, 40 to 50 hours a week just to make a paycheck where you just make just enough to pay your bills and maybe have a little bit left over for gas, some food. And maybe some drugs. Nothing for your savings account. Nothing for your future. Your medical bills. The cancer you're going to build. None of that shit. They deserve to live a good life. Privileged. Like every other Hollywood fucking child. Born from stars. You dumbass. Try to teach him lessons. Fuck you, Jeff Goldblum. You idiot. This guy doesn't love his kids. That's all I'm going to say. If you love your kids, you give them everything in the world and let them overdose and do drugs and whatever the hell they want. It's their lives. You love them. Idiot. Son of a bitch, Gomer. You're getting too wild there in the comments. The, the, the YouTube blocked it. <laughs> Cheers. All right, we're moving on from Jeff Goldblum and his fucking kids. <laughs> Move on to another serious issue this week. Because it appears that Polly Shore fucking heard my cries and he has decided to fuck over Richard Simmons and move forward with the Richard Simmons biopic. Which caused Richard Simmons to post this on Instagram or Twitter or wherever the fuck. I just read that a man that I don't know, 
is writing my biopic starring Polly Shore. I don't, I do not approve of this movie. I am in talks with the major studios to create my own biopic with some help from talented motherfuckers. All right. Wait for this movie. Don't go watch shitty Polly Shore's piece of shit. This is basically what Richard Simmons said. Now, I was really happy because I was pissed, genuinely pissed, when Richard Simmons faked that he was dying and made us all worry. It fucking pissed me off, you idiot. If you don't know how to use Twitter, don't use it, Richard Simmons, you fucking dumbass. Making it seem like you're dying and then everyone's scared and they, oh, I'm not dying, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, fuck you. It's the internet, you idiot. So I was happy that Polly Shore's fucking him over and doing this shit. Fuck yeah, that's what you get. For making me feel sorry for your bitch ass who's not dying. Son of a bitch. But anyways, I'm really disappointed though. Because Polly Shore's a pussy. It's a pussy. You're already fucking giving it to him by going along and doing the movie, even though he said no. And then Polly Shore replies to this ass. And he posts on in IG you guys I was up all night crying regarding Richard Simmons tweet Richard how do you not approve this movie I mean really who's better to play you in the movie than me Leonardo DiCaprio's not gonna play you Brad Pitt's not gonna play you I'm perfect Everyone already thinks I'm you. We're the same. Beautiful inside and out. Hell yeah. And he continued for more paragraphs, just embarrassing himself, talking about that he's known him forever, he knows his mom, and that please come over and hear the pitch, and you're gonna love it, and I need to be a star, I need to be famous again, I need validity from Hollywood, because I've been absent the last 35 years, and no one knows who I am. Please, Richard, let me play you in a biopic. Fuck you, Polly Shore. You're continuously embarrassing yourself like an idiot. Just do the movie and embarrass Richard Simmons without embarrassing yourself, you idiot. <sighs> this is just embarrassing for everyone. Completely. Richard Simmons is a dumbass because he does think that the studio is going to get someone like DiCaprio or Brad Pitt to play him. Fucking Adam Driver, some 10 foot tall. My name, my name, my name is Adam Driver. Oh, I'm... I was in Star Wars. No one's gonna play you. No one looks like you. This dumbass is actually right. He's the only fucking idiot who's aged so horribly that he actually looks and resembles you. Who can actually play you. Plus, he kind of already did kind of act kind of faggy back in the day. So he's perfect. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> I don't know. I'm done with his ass. Both of these guys are fucking idiots to me. That's all I'm gonna say. Fuck you, Richard Simmons, for pretending you're dying, and fuck you, Polly Shore, for being pathetic. Asking for jobs and shit. Fuck you. <laughs> Anyways, we're moving on. Hopefully, if this channel just dies all of a sudden, there, there's tons of. I don't, I don't know if you can hear it. You probably can. There's tons of thunder. And sh there's a thunderstorm coming in right now from Houston, Texas. Jose Trevino is sending hell my way. Uh, but yeah, it's about to hit this area, and it's gonna be fucking crazy. So hopefully everything stays on, because <laughs> I've lost power in the past. Uh, stay tuned. If it goes off, we'll come right back as soon as everything restarts. It might take a few minutes. But anyways, let's move on with this ass. Guess what? Winona Judd's daughter, Grace Kelly, was arrested. For being naked at the intersection of a highway, dancing and asking people 
uh, if they want to fucking have sex with her for money, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here she is with her fucking <laughs> her lazy eye. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They had to give her clothes. They had to give her clothes in jail uh, because she was naked when they found her. <laughs> you see, Jeff Goldblum, this is what your kids want. They want this kind of life, privileged life and shit. Do whatever you fuck you want. You want to make them get jobs? Fuck you, Jeff Goldblum. You're gonna miss out on. You're gonna miss out on shit like this. You know? <laughs> oh my god. It's all right, folks. I mean, she does is a daughter of Winona Judd, a multi-millionaire Grammy award winning country artist. Everybody knows who the fuck the Judds and all that ass, you know, George Bush and all that shit. I don't remember the controversy. She's all right. All right. She paid a thousand dollars in fines. She got out the same night. She didn't even need to see a judge. And I think she even got a stripper gig by one of the cops, one of the fat cops. He wanted to need a stripper for the weekend. Say, you know what, honey? Fuck it. You know, we don't have to have sex, but you can come over here and strip for me and the boys this weekend. Ha <laughs> ha Cheers! Opportunities all around. Opportunities all around. You just gotta have your eyes open. You never know where they're gonna pop out. Anyways. Cheers to her and her daring <laughs> approach to prostitution. Let me just get naked and flat out. <laughs> flat out let them know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking of perverts, Dan Schneider is now suing the people from Quiet on the Set. Dark Side of Children shows for defamation of character because they say that now people think he is a molester of children, which he is not, according to him. He says, I was never charged, accused, or caught. Therefore, you're defamation, it's slander, and I'm suing your ass and shit. Because these two handsome grown-up boys that I oversaw the whole time I was in Nickelodeon, they can testify with a, with my thumb up their ass that I was a good man to them and I showed them the ropes of Hollywood and now they're rich and famous and have everything they ever wanted. Keenan Thompson, motherfucker. I told you guys Tina Keenan Thompson behind all this ass. <laughs> there he is right there. Fucking supporting this pervert right here. So yeah. This guy's now suing the show that uh, claims, and then mind you, the show didn't say he was molesting children. It didn't. The show just said that there was women that were saying that that he was misogynist and that he would watch porn. He would say, "Let's make a skit to be like porn, like coming on a kid's face, but instead it's like a nose spitting green slime on the little girl's face and make her go like that." Ah. Uh, and it's there. I mean, the, the episodes are there. You can go back and watch them. So insinuations, because this guy watched a lot of porn and would see it there on the set while people were there. Disney watching porn on his laptop. They said he would count. He would bring a little little treasure chest and he would open it up and count his gold coins in front of everybody like Scrooge McDuck. And, he, and then the employees, so some of them would have to, women would have to share paychecks. I'm only paying one of you. You can split the paycheck with that other whore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's what the show said about him. They didn't say he was a sexual molester. But he says, because they mentioned my name on that show about molestation of children, everybody now thinks I molested children. But Kenan Thompson, right down here, can testify that he didn't get molested and now he's rich and famous. That's all I'm going to say. Kenan Thompson, hey, the ball's in your court now, buddy. Let's hear your side of the story. Cheers. Fuck you, Dan Snyder. Or Snyder. Or whatever the fuck. Anyways. Uh, let's get into some of the older, much older part of Hollywood. <laughs> because none other than Roberto De Nero was caught on set 
yelling at brown people? Yeah. He got angry and started yelling at one of us brown skis. Not just one of us, a bunch of them. And believe it or not, it was none other than the leftists. The Biden youth. These pro-Palestinians. Anti-Jews. Were there on the set of his movie or whatever the fuck it's called. An ass. And, uh, and he was not having it. He was not happy uh, that these motherfuckers showed up. And that they were spewing their leftist rhetoric and their views, he said. All right. And he halted production. Well, actually, they halted production. That's why he was mad in the first place. They halted production. And he, he said, I've had enough of this crap. And I'm about to show you a video of his little breakdown and shit. Here we go. This is not a movie. This is real. There's people working here with jobs and you're interrupting it. And you're wasting time and money with your bullshit. You wanna protest? Protest with your signs. But we're filming a movie, shut the fuck up. Big boys, adults are making money. Being adults. You children can be there with your signs, but be quiet. Sons of bitches. Basically what he was saying. He was he had enough of this ass. This isn't America. He says in America, you work and you make money. You don't get shit for free like in China or in Bern Bernie Sanders fucking fantasy little oh, fucking world. It's America. That's what this asshole was saying. Well, I'm just going to say one thing about all this. All right. Fuck you. Motherfucker. Talking down about like, this is real life. This is not real life. You're filming something fake. You idiot. De Niro talking about, this is real life. This is, this is the, the we were, we're fucking filming. There's no real life. That's fake. You're making fake shit for people. And then there's just Jesse Plemons, the most fucking Nazi motherfucker back there, red hair and shit. <laughs> Aryan looking motherfucker right there. The Hitler youth representation right there. <laughs> and then uh, that white lady back there. And these motherfuckers yelling at Browns. <laughs> then the state of America and Hollywood where the left doesn't even know what if they should support themselves and their fellow leftists or not like this motherfucker this guy is anti-trump he is a left winger and here he is he's had enough of these children without jobs that that don't have anything to do that day afternoon so they gotta go and fucking interrupt bullshit lie in front of a fucking picket fence with fucking signs and ass fuck you get to work like the rest of us None of us like our jobs. None of us like our jobs. All of us are underpaid. We're all struggling and suffering. Yet, we all keep going to fucking work and doing it. Because we have to keep moving the clog and the wheel so this fucking society keeps fucking alive. You fucking children need to grow the fuck up. Put your goddamn signs down. Put your big boy pants up and go to work. Alright. You're upsetting Robert De Niro. He's in the final last three years of his life. He wants to be on film. For fuck's sakes. Fuck you, Robert De Niro. Also for yelling at brown people, you son of a bitch. The people that you support and shit. Your motherfuckers are so lost right now. You don't even know who the fuck you're yelling at. You idiots. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Robert De Niro's fucking angry there. It's so funny, man. <laughs> 
I was surprised. He probably had to go to the, go get a check for high blood pressure <laughs> after that ass. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say and shit. Uh, anyways, uh, let's get back to it. Uh, well, actually, no. You know, since we are on the subject about talking about the leftists, uh, something interesting happened this week, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> related to this, I, I, I find this amusing. Um, but it looks like the pro Palestinian protests were underway in the campus of UCLA, University of Los Angeles, California, the most progressive state city in the world, Hollywood, California. This Thursday, all the Palestinian pro protesters showed up and protest on campus peacefully with signs and their burkas and Yamahas or whatever the fuck you want to call them. I don't know. The shit that looks like terrorists. They all had them on. It was peaceful. And then the Joe Biden youth showed up. Yes, my friends. Those youth that don't have any jobs have nothing better to do and they show up everywhere and give their two cents and everything showed up and they all got excited and they started claiming that they were changing the world they were that dead you know that vegans for life fuck trump fuck the jews they were saying all of this bernie sanders rhetoric and then fuck elon musk and vote biden this is a lot of just nonsense and, and trans kids and fuck JK Rowling. All this ass was being spewed everywhere. It wasn't just Palestinians. All of a sudden, now the entire left community showed up. The yo Joe Biden youth showed up. And things really, really started to get out of hand. It was still kind of peaceful. Up until this one motherfucker yelled out, Hey, I think I see. Alec Baldwin over there and all hell broke loose and then this happened the cops and the riot squad were caught in and they were hosing motherfuckers and spraying them down and just and all hell broke loose rubber bullets all of the shit uh, all because uh, Alec Baldwin was supposedly spotted among the crowd and shit. You know, it was a lie. Some motherfucker was just there. Some motherfucker, some Alex Jones just showed up. And everybody went crazy, you know. A bunch of Mexicans and, and Palestinians were beat up, you know, like by a bunch of Jews. Because the Jews are probably the ones with the hard hats. That's the way it is in life. Uh, yeah, yeah. The rich and the powerful beat on the poor. Uh, but that, that's it all went down. There was fucking, you know, look at that. They're throwing Gatorade on the cops and shit. Like they won a fucking Super Bowl and shit. And there was smoke and, and grenades and fucking, it was crazy. It got out of hand. Crazy. All right. Peaceful protestings in the campus. But that, that's not the worst part about all of this, folks. Because the aftermath is really what is heartbreaking. Because this is what was left over Friday morning. This was the scene. And this is what America right now is in the current hands. All right. This is the Joe Biden's youth. All right. America in the hands of Joe Biden's youth. This is what it's going to look like. Look at that. There's a loaf of bread there on the floor. Condoms. Fucking bloody tampons, water burger, Burger King. Look at all that shit. Your butt wiser. Look at that vegan food, Chipotle. Everywhere, ass everywhere. It looks. You know what it looks like? I saw this already, and I saw this. I think it was the late nineties or early two thousands. It was called idiocracy. In the future, two thousand years from now, there's trash everywhere. So this is what peaceful protesting gets you nowadays from the Joe Biden youth. Uh, harmony. This is what vegans do to America. <laughs> and non-binaries and pro-Palestinians. <laughs> oh, 
all you fucking vegans and all you fucking <laughs> This is this is what the, this is what they do. <laughs> you know who's gonna clean all this shit up? This this is a fucking farce because this is all Joe Biden's plan to let his youth ruin America and then he's gonna have all the migrants he left into the country clean all this shit up for them once he enslaves them all. He's gonna have a slave workforce to clean up after all these these fucking entitled children. <laughs> a slave workforce of migrants, immigrants from uh, Buenos Aires and Venezuela to clean up up after all these fucking un edu oh no, I'm sorry, all these educated entitled fucking children. Ah, uh, welcome to America! Cheers! We gotta move to Japan, fellas, is all I'm saying. Look at this, Yusef over here having the time of his life, streaming live. <laughs> 9G and shit. <gasps> Fuck you, Yusef. And your grandfather. Alright, anyways. We're almost done with the weekly pop culture breakdown. But as always, we cannot finish without going over the yay <laughs> and let's get in with the bad stuff first unfortunately my yay is coming under attack again like always i don't understand what is people's obsession with trying to topple and dethrone and pretty much ruin and slander a man who's just simply trying to change the world and wake up, wake up the blind. All right, that's all this man's doing. Ah, the Yeze is being sued now, apparently, by his black security staff that used to work for him. And they're claiming that he was racist against them, that he treated the white security guards better than the black ones that first of all he was being really mean and offensive to all the blacks ones and he would say the n-word to them and shit and then when he would talk to the white ones he was all proper and nice um i mean that's pretty much how life is. When you talk to a white person, you can't be like, what up, motherfucker? How's it going? You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying, motherfucker? Because he's going to be like, what? You got to talk to him like a white person. When you talk to a motherfucker, you can talk to like a motherfucker like you know what it is. You know what I'm saying? He's going to know what the fuck you saying. So, I think this guy, this is a bullshit. They're going to throw this case out right away. All right? Because it's like, if Yeze was to talk to the white motherfucker the same way he talks to the black motherfucker, he's going to have to talk to him twice because the second time around, he's going to need to explain to him what he just said the first time. So Yeze is just saving time and he's saying it properly to the white guy so he knows what he's saying. But all the dumb motherfuckers, you can just speak to him like you know what it is. And he knows what he's saying. You dumbass. Any judge, any black judge in America is going to throw this out the court. That's all I'm going to say. Fuck you, security guard. You're an idiot for trying to sue Yeezy for this ass. Throw this out right now. Not enough evidence. This is bullshit. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, fuck the lawsuit. It's ass. But the Yeezy did surprise us all this week on a now deleted IG post on 4 24 24 24 or 4 what is it i don't know 4 24 24 or 14 i don't know what day i'm on yezy posted this and then deleted it all right 4 24 24 yezy porn is coming Oh yeah! <laughs> now he quickly deleted this. Luckily me, who follow him, like a hawk, I quickly screen captured this ass. Try to investigating what's going on. Nobody knows what this means. Well, I think we all know what is coming. He's gonna start his own pornography company. 
and the insiders are saying that he is actually serious about this sources are saying he's actually talking to stormy daniels that's trump's ex whore that he legally paid for by the way legal transaction agreed upon by both parties totally legal in the state that it happened because it's america stormy daniels her ex boyfriend mike Moz. yazy has been contacting him asking him hey how does she run her porn empire i need some tips on how to get this bitch on how to get this bitch off the ground motherfucker oh yeah this is happening fellas yeze is going to start a pornography company and if we're lucky super saiyan joku it'll star his wife bianca said sorry oh, yeah. <laughs> and hopefully him too maybe they already have tapes maybe all of this stuff that we've been seeing Oh, uh, like for live and shit. That's all part of the porno. That's like the beginning of it. Like all those her walking around the streets and this stuff that she's wearing. That's the beginning of the porno. And then they go home and then we have the action that has already been filmed. He's just ready to fucking put it out. You fellas, this is going to be good. I can't wait. Ha <laughs> ha. This is better than if Kim Kardashian's porn. Well, all she did was just lay there and didn't even make a sound. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> she sounded like a like a snoring pigeon. <laughs> That's Kim Kardashian's fucking porno right there. Fuck you! I'm excited for this. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how this this ends up. But since we are ridiculing and talking about his ex wife, we're gonna do talk about something that she did this week. She did the most embarrassing thing in the world. But she tried to copy. His current wife dyed her hair blonde. She didn't cut it like she did cut her hair short, but she made it look short. And then she wears like this fucking apron in the front. No bra on, but an apron to cover herself and shit. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's not good enough. You whore. I'll tell you why. Because you're still wearing underwear. Bianca Sensori doesn't wear any underwear so you can see her asshole and her pussy lips. You bitch. You're not being slutty enough. How dare you even try to copy the goddess that is Bianca Sensori. Fuck you, Kim Kardashian. You can't hold a fucking candle to her natural fucking voluptuous body and shit. Your plastic pump full of whale and seal guts ass could never... Never satisfy the Yeezy the way Bianca and Sorry does. You are. That's all I'm gonna say. Cheers. And cheers to my Yeezy. We love you. All right, cheers, y'all. Got a joint sparked up. Got another beer ready. Let's get this show on the road and get started with your comic book nerd shit of the week. Ah, uh, yeah. In this week, it was announced that the Masters of the Universe live action movie is still in pre production. <laughs> this fucking movie has been trying to be made since the failure of the 1980s ones and shit. Um. I think Kevin Smith fucking ruined it with his stupid ass, the cartoon series. And James Wan was attached to it maybe like 10 years ago, and there was even a Battle Cat. Like, he was already started on production designs and shit. Um, this apparently has been giving a release date of 2026, two years from now. Which I can tell you already, if you're announcing something that's going to come out two years from now, I can tell you this is never going to come out. Period. Never. Never going to see the light of day. If you're announcing it that soon. 
That just means you don't have enough confidence in it at all. Motherfucker. Uh, the worst part about it is the new synopsis origin of it. Hope you all are ready for this. Masters of the Universe's fans. And Kevin Smith haters. Apparently, Adam, Prince Adam, I think that's his name, I don't remember, he man. He comes to Earth as a child, as a baby or whatever, like Superman. And they send him here with the sword, but they get separated. And so he grows up here not knowing anything about himself and shit. And then sometime when he's grown up and is 18 years old or 17 or, you know, some teenager, they're going to get some fucking Justin Bieber, some guy, you know what I'm saying? Some fucking young kid. Uh, he finally finds the sword. And then all of a sudden he gets transported back to his world. And he has to figure out how to become He-Man to defeat Skeletor. I mean... Uh, I'll say that I don't know why the movie cannot take place in Eternia and be Eternia and only Eternia and their universe and their world and their characters. Why do you have to bring Earth and humans into it? It is just the dumbest thing to do. And then to, to adapt this movie is easy if you just adapt it the way it's written. They're not humans. This is not Earth. It's another world. And it's another thing. Don't fucking include cars, radios, MP3s, or nothing that is humans in it. Only include their lore and their fucking world. There's no need to include us and force us into it. But here we are, another He-Man movie. Another Masters of the Universe movie. Where humans and Earth will play a part in it. Because we know how the last one turned out. You idiots. Here we go again. <sighs> and then you wonder why I drink. And do drugs. Fuck you, Hollywood. <sighs> We're moving on from this ass. Netflix announced this week that they are now working on a live action Scooby Dooby Doo series. With the gang, with Velma, and Shaggy, and Fred, and uh, I forget what this is, Daphne, and Scooby. I don't think it's going to be as cool as James Gunn's ones. Something tells me this is going to be modernized, and Shaggy's going to be black, and Fred's going to be fucking Arab. Of course, Velma's going to be a lesbian. And Daphne is not going to be white or a redhead because, because she's not. They're getting rid of all the redheads and everything. If you ever notice media, the redheads are getting replaced by blacks and Asians and shit. So Daphne's going to be Asian. Let's just say she's Asian. Scooby-Doo might not even be a fucking Great Dane because Great Danes are too masculine. I think he's going to be one of them... Lassie dogs, those collies, and shit. Uh, we'll see. Netflix. The smartest thing they could do. The smartest thing they could do. Is if they would literally. And I literally mean literally. Adapt the cartoon. It's in the 60s. They dress like that. They look like that. It's exactly... And they say and act that way. No changing them to modern haircuts. No changing them to modern slang. No adding this or that or gender swap. No. If you adapt the original cartoon into live action, 
exactly the way it is, it would work. The characters exactly the same way, dress the same way, looking the same way in the 60s, not modernized. It would work. But that's not the culture we live in or the times we live in nowadays, folks. So get ready to be horrified whenever they actually do show us what fucking monstrosity they come up with for the Netflix Scooby-Doo show. Live action. Cheers to that, I guess. I don't know. I'm just going to get high, to be honest with you. Fuck Netflix and this adaptation. I don't have any hopes for it at all. Uh, I want to quickly jump into some DC ass. Actually, no. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Uh, I have a few other uh, topics before that. My bad. Jeff Bridges was apparently seen on the set of Tron Aries with a script. And not only was he seen, but he took a selfie of himself reading the script with the helmet from the first 1970s, 80s movie. And he posted an IG to spoil it. He's going to be back in the movie as Clue or whatever the fuck he played. And they're going to de-age him the fuck where he's not even going to look good like this and going to look like fucking rubbery ass CGI bullshit you know technology has advanced and god damn it I've seen Marvel Studios do some good de-aging so if he looks if they de-age him he's gonna be the same character and they de-age him again to be Clue or whatever the fuck he better look way better than he did in the last movie cause god damn it these were some really really bad de-aging effects back then They've gotten better. They've gotten way better. That's all I'm going to say. The dude is still alive and kicking it. This motherfucker. He's a badass. I'll tell you that right now. Cheers to the dude. Jeff Bridges. I want to get into my review. Real quick. It'll be a quick review. I'm not doing episode by episode. I only do episode by episodes. When the fuck they release them once a week. Like Disney and Marvel. All these other motherfuckers who are dropping the series. On a Thursday. Ten episodes. Fuck you. I'm not going to be able to review it that Friday. It takes me a whole week. To watch everything. So I finally saw it. But let me get into my review of. Knuckles, the Enkinda. I thought it was in Enchilla. Apparently, it's in Kindas. I mean, all this time, I'm not educated enough. And and the worst part is, no one's ever corrected me. So everybody has been leaving me to sound like an idiot, saying Enchilla when it's Enchil Enkinda. Fuck you. Everybody, if you knew, you dicks. It's all left at the Mexican, doesn't know how to say words. Fuck you. Anyways, I love this fucking show. Let me straight up, right out, spoil it for you and say this show is actually about this fucking guy. This fucking fat fucking. He looks like a couple of my friends. That guy back there that Knuckles is protecting and is hiding behind the bowling pins and shit. The show's actually about him. Uh, with Knuckles as a side character. But. It didn't bother me at all. Let me explain you why. Because the, the, the story is about Knuckles and it starts about Knuckles. But by like the third episode, it transitions where the story is now about the guy and, and Knuckles is the side character. So it does it, it 
tricks you into it. It really does. It tricks you into it. Uh, but it's perfect because, dude, the acting is great for this show. This is a kid show, obviously. This is a a, a kid show. Um, but and it's got a lot of Easter eggs as far as the Sonic, the games, the the the, the you know, casino casino zone and some of the moves and shit like that. Uh, like when he glides and stuff like that. But, you know, they had to make a story somehow. And the story is with this character. And I think if I remember, he came out in the last movie. He was one of the cops. And they chose him to be the character in this one. And in this one, Knuckles is meditating. He fucks up in the beginning and gets grounded because he doesn't understand Earth. It's funny. The characters are cute and then they're funny with the shit, the shit, you know, the first episode, it's hilarious because how he, how this whole adventure starts. Basically, Knuckles gets in trouble at home because since he doesn't know what Earth is, you know, he's trying to make himself at home and he builds like inside the, the, the black girl's home. He, he makes a fucking, a fighting pit and he dresses the dog like a gladiator and then he opens like oh the dog's the first he's gonna fight the first challenger and he opens his do door opens up and it's the mailman and the mailman's like can i go home please <laughs> i have a family and the chick gets mad and he's like what the fuck you're grounded and knuckles is all like what does grounded mean and sonic is all like oh it's don't worry, it's fun. It's, it's fun. I they I used to get grounded all the time. Follow me. <laughs> and he takes him to the attic. And he's got all these, you know, because Sonic's happy and shit. And Sonic has all these comic books. And he says, you're going to be up here alone for a week. And you can play with all these things. And it'll be okay. <laughs> You'll get used to this. But Knuckles meditates. And his master, who's dead already, tells him that he's the last of his kind. And he needs to make more and, and to his tribe and obviously there's no more enkindas and so he says you just have to choose somebody and train him in our ways and that way our our you know our ways he can pass them down and he they chose this fucking pussy because this guy's a pussy and uh, basically their knuckles is trying to take him to las vegas to be in a bowling tournament against his dad who's a bowling champion who abandoned that guy as a child at a TJ Maxx. He just left him there. <laughs> and to go be he left him there. It's funny, bro. It's fucking stupid and funny. Um the third episode. Because they want an adventure. But the third episode. Oh yeah. The bad guys. Basically, the bad guys are trying to capture Knuckles because they know that each quill, each hair, is energy and power. That's how they're powering their weapons. They have a little quill that he's dropped, you know, from walking around. And they want, they basically want to catch him to kill him and take all of his power, you know. Uh, so that's what they're doing. Uh, and so these guys are getting to Las Vegas. And at the same time, Knuckles is trying to teach this guy not to be a pussy and how to be a warrior. Because his clan is full of warriors. And so he wants him to teach him how to be a warrior and shit. Um, the character acting, the people in this are so badass because... They make this feel like a animated series. They make this feel like a cartoon. And what I mean by that is that there's some scenes where some of their characters, something happens and then they say something and then they do like, and this is totally anime. And those of you who watch anime will know what I'm talking about. But they do some stuff where all of a sudden the character goes, no, and looks up to the sky and then the camera is looking up from the sky downward and he's like, no, and then they go back. Anyways, like I was saying, and I was just like, what the fuck? And I'm like, that is so anime. Like, that stupid shit where it's like, all of a sudden, it, it's almost like this series has figured out how to do that weird, emba weird, embarrassing anime thing into live action. You know, like when you see the, the, the weird, you know, the half a second anime shit that they do. And I, I don't even know how to explain it, but I know if you watch anime, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes they even have a little drop up here or they have weird face or a wrinkle. This show somehow, I think, has figured out how to do that, how to translate that type of shit into live action. Because I saw it here several times. And I laughed. 
And in, in some of those scenes, Knuckles is not even in it. It's just humans, and they do it. And I was just like, oh my god, that's hilarious. It's a stupid show, and it's funny. It's funny as hell. There's probably one one episode. This is six episodes long. And uh, how long are they? I don't even remember how long they are. I, I think I did. I already put them in my hard drive, so they might not be here anymore. Yeah, they're not on here. Um, I think they're an hour long. They might be less. Maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, they might be an hour long. There's only six episodes. They are an hour long. Uh, there, there's only six episodes. Um, but, uh, there is one episode that I just, I didn't care for and I hate it. And, and it's like a musical and, and it tells, it's stupid. It tells Knuckles' story in the form of a musical play with humans in puppet character, in, in, in mascot suits. I just, that's a stupid episode. Um, but they were all really funny and really entertaining is what I'm trying to say. Episode 3 to me was one of the funniest ones because they they make a pit stop at the guy's mom's house and the sister is there, his sister who's an FBI agent. I think she's lying. I think she just found that shit and put it on and <laughs> pretends to be an FBI agent. It's funny. Her, her relationship with her brother is hilarious, bro. It's super childish is the only way I can explain it, but it's hilarious. Um, but their mother is Rizzo from Greece, motherfucker. I don't even remember this lady's name. Um, but the uh, fuck, I have to. I don't want to do a dishonor, so I'm gonna I'm gonna search for it real quick while I talk to you guys. Rizzo from Greece uh, is in this. Stalker Channing. This lady is fucking beautiful has always been beautiful i've always thought and to me she's always had this type of elizabeth taylor type of face looking to her but she plays the dude's mother and i recognized her right away because that's a really recognizable face especially if you know fucking greece and shit right away i was like that's rizzo this lady still you know you, she's aged but you i could tell it's her um she plays the mother and the guy's Jew, and it's Jew. Some Jew. there's a lot of Jewish jokes in part three. It's in episode three. It's hilarious. It's just a Jewish filled episode, and I enjoyed it really, really. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It's hilarious. Um, there's a lot of comparison to the Holocaust and what happened to Knuckles. It's great. Um, and then also, um, I forget what this guy's name is. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna look for it also. But when they get to, you know, Hollywood or whatever, uh, or, or Las Vegas, um, to, to face his dad, because his dad, his name is P P Pistol Pete. <laughs> his dad's name is Pistol Pete. And his dad is a fucking bowling champ who abandoned him at a fucking TJ Maxx. I think that's what, they, what the story is. He just left him. It's the craziest story as a child just left him there abandoned him and he went to go become a fucking uh, a bowling champ and and it's Carrie Elwes I don't even know how to say his name E L W E S I'm sorry I'm not a I'm not a real american <laughs> I was bad at grammar um but he plays the dad and he's just perfect in this he's hilarious and shit Kit Cuddy is in this or Kadai however you want to call it um there's some other actors in this um they're just they're they're really they're it's a it's a cute funny show i think that if anyone would watch this there's no way in hell they wouldn't ent be entertained or continue watching it after episode one because i was right away i was just like this is actually pretty good like <laughs> it's the right mixture of everything in it it doesn't take itself seriously it's almost like if you're watching a cartoon but in live action it's just the best way to describe this. It's a good show. It's a good fucking show. Um, I think this is even better than the goddamn movies. Only because the movies are short. Like, it's almost like two episodes long. Like, an hour and so. Where this is six episodes, six hours long. The characters are fleshed out and things grow on you and shit like that. So this is really good. Better than the movies, for sure. Um...
I've liked the movies. I've liked the movies are cute and they're funny. Um, you know, it's nothing. It's nothing amazing, but it's just one of those things you go and you want to laugh and fucking, you know. There's not serious adult sex jokes in this. Uh, there's some funny stuff and there are some adult jokes and and it's it's funny, man. It's just a funny show. I enjoyed this. I recommend this if you have this. I think it's Paramount. I don't know. I don't pay for anything. We Vin, Winscribe VPN, Jack Sparrow Bay. Cheers. Oh, oh, what is it? YTS.MX. Cheers. I recommend this to anybody. If you have it, go fucking watch it. Download it. It's good. It's great. Uh, I want more. I hope they make a tail show. Another Sonic show. I mean, they may have to make more series. Even if they don't make a season two, I want more spinoffs and shit. Because um, it's great. It really is. All right. Uh, enough of that, Knuckles. And let's get into a little bit of the DC ass. And believe it or not, we're going to talk about the great one. The final boss himself. Dwayne The Rock Big Cock Johnson because this week he's been being exposed all over the internet and the tabloids because they're saying that this son of a bitch was actually plotting trying to take over DC and take the job from Walter Hamada that his actual intention was to make Black Adam so successful that the studio and Warner were going to push Walter Hamada and put him in charge of DC, the DC universe, because it was a failure from that point. And he said, I'm going to save it. My stardom's going to save it. I'm going to have Superman and Henry Cavill. I'm going to give the fans what they want. If you smell that your movie sucked ass and no one liked it. Dumbass. Yeah. But that was apparently his intention. It backfired on him because his movie was not as successful as he thought it was going to be. And fry, quite frankly, the reason why it wasn't successful is because you chose a fucking 12-year-old to write the dialogue for the movie. You dumbass. It's either that or he wrote it himself. That's why it sounds so bad. It really does sound like a child wrote the script because everything coming out of people's mouths sounds so lame and generic. It's embarrassing. Of course, this motherfucker, all he's ever done in his life is get hit in the head with steel chairs and get dropped on his back and shit. So, you know, it sounds like rhetoric that would have come out of a fucking idiot's head. So, yeah, he probably wrote his own movie and that's why it's success. Well, the trades are also saying... The Drake du Dwayne the Big Cock Johnson apparently was very unprofessional. And he would had a habit of arriving eight hours late to any set. That includes the Fast and the Furious, which is why Vin Diesel often got into fights with him. And it includes the movie Red Notice with Ryan Reynolds and they said that even he and Ryan Reynolds got into it and Ryan Reynolds is a tall motherfucker. He's not as big as Dwayne, but he's as tall as him. So at least when they look eye to eye, they can look eye to eye to each other and shit. Uh, but even he got into it with The Rock and that they didn't speak throughout the remainder of the filming of Red Notice and that barely maybe last year they made up over a text. Or some shit. They still haven't publicly next to each other and shit. But you know. I'm sorry. Through a text and shit. Um. So yeah. All these bad habits are coming out about Dwayne. About being late and unprofessional and shit. But even worse. Some of the worst things are even coming out to damage his character. Is that saying that this guy had the habit of not only showing up eight hours late, but because he would notice that people were upset that they were waiting eight hours until he finally showed up to start filming. That he said, I'm I'm sorry, I'm not going to take any breaks. I'm going to make it up to you. And so because he didn't take any breaks, because he was trying to be a nice guy, he decided he would piss 
into Voss bottles. I can't put the Voss bottle here because we'll get sued for copyrights. It's shit. Luckily, this cheap-ass purified water from Walmart ain't gonna sue the shit out of us for nothing. Um, but apparently he would piss into Voss drinking bottles. Those glass plastic bottles and shit. He was piss into him on the set really quick. Like, I need to piss. Somebody give me a bottle. He would piss. He would turn around and piss. Ugh. And then pull his pants away. And then give it the bottle to the assistant to go throw it away. Keep filming. And supposedly that was his way of making it up to everybody. Your way of making it up to everybody for being eight hours late and making us work here even later is you're going to save time by pissing in water bottles in front of us. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. Well, there are some people that were happy about all this. A lot of the migrant brown workers on the set, you know, the guys who nail and hammer and pick up the shit and throw out the piss water bottles, those guys were actually happy. But because the Rock Dwayne Johnson was late eight hours and then they filmed for another eight hours, they were actually clocking in 16 hour days. So for the first time in their miserable existence, they actually qualified for Obamacare and they could have health care from the government. So it turns out this whole time, the Rock Dwayne, the Big Cock Johnson was actually doing this to help the people. <laughs> It's just one big misunderstanding, fellas. The Rock cares about his fellow Browns. He was doing it for them. Get the extra money, the overtime, and the health care. You qualify now because I'm late pissing into bottles and shit. Cheers! And cheers to Wayne. Big Cock Johnson pissing into bottles. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I don't think I've ever pissed into a bottle in my entire life. That's perfectly honest. I will admit, I think I pissed into a can. <laughs> One time. <laughs> I was scared of slicing the tip of my cock <laughs> with the rim. <laughs> Cheers, motherfuckers. <laughs> Anyways, we're not done with the DC ass. Let's get into the main DC ass. And it's none other. Then Ham James Gunn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The great wizard himself, James Gunn, has gone on his IG. He's got nothing better to do. You know, he's not married to a very hot, attractive, half his age, young, talented wife. Be fucking all day long and shit. Nah, he's, he's busy Instagramming teases. For his upcoming shows for the DCU. And he has teased a bloody green lantern white glove with a ring and a light coming fucking out of it and shit. And uh, basically announcing that the show The Lanterns on Max starting production soon. With his best friend Nathan Fillmore, or whatever the fuck his name is, being the gay Green Lantern guy Gardner and shit. A bunch of other motherfuckers. Nobody's Zack Snyder hired. Don't start coming over here asking for the black Green Lantern. This is James Gunn's universe and he doesn't like brown people. He wants whites and Americans in it. Let it be known right now. Dumbasses. A white Lex Luthor and a white Superman. That's James Gunn's universe. White Green Lantern. Gay, but still white. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying, not me. I mean, I did that, that's not my words. I don't represent what he's saying. I'm just fucking dictating it to you. Fuck you, James Gunn, and your discriminatory ways. You dick. Another stuff. 
current rumors that are out right now is they're stating that James Gunn has Clash has, has more cards up his sleeve. Because apparently he is going to make a Justice League International movie. Ah, more obscure bullshit teams and characters that the average fucking moviegoer doesn't know nothing about. Fuck you. Fuck you, James Gunn. But I know, I know what you're going to say. Oh, well, technically, he's already shown us a few of the members. They're going to come out of Superman, the gay Green Lantern, the Mr. Terrific, the motherfucker uh, hot girl, who sounds like hot girl, which she is a hot girl, and the bald alopecian metamorpho. They're all probably going to be part of this Justice League International at the same time asking Superman, would you like to be part of our team at the end of his movie? <sighs> so James Gunn is basically trying to bring the 1930s, 40s fucking universe into a modern era. That's just what it appears to me. He's basically trying to bring the 1930s universe and characters and storylines, but modernize them into today's times. We're going to see fucking all these weird characters that nobody's fucking ever heard of and shit. You know, I like Blue Beetle. I like that movie. I thought it was cool. I hope they keep that little Mexican kid because I like that shit. I'm still trying not to judge this asshole or oh, James Gunn over here too much. Uh, because I haven't seen a trailer yet. But I just feel that he's throwing too much ass into, into one thing. You know? Zack Snyder already did it, and he failed. You can't start... You gotta follow the Marvel formula. That is how you make gold and billion-dollar franchises. You set up the characters to later set up the team. Connected universes, things bleeding into one another, movie to movie. When you stray away from that formula, like they did after Tony Stark died, that's when you fail. None of the end of credit scenes have mattered. Nothing has bled into another movie the way they usually do. And now, you're fucking billions of dollars in the hole because you didn't follow the formula. And James Gunn is obviously not following the formula. He's following the Zack Snyder formula where he's all like, let me just throw a bunch of ass at you at once and hopefully you'll like it and understand it. Because that's exactly what Rebel Moon is and that's exactly what the Snyderverse was. All right. Only hardcore motherfucking nerds are going to appreciate shit like that because they don't need explanations. They already know. But everyone else is going to be like, who the fuck is this black guy? Who the fuck is this little Mexican girl? Why does she have wings? Who the fuck is this bald guy? And why doesn't he have any eyebrows? And why is Green Lantern gay? That's what it's going to be like for the average fucking viewer. I'm sorry. Fuck you, James Gunn, and your failed fucking DC Universe and ass. Because it pisses me off every time I fucking have to put your little fucking uh, I'm better than you Steve Jobs fucking face up on this channel. Fuck you. We're moving on. To real ass. Just the bitches. Cheers. But just yesterday I think Paul Hausen or Van ha Van da Van Dausen or what is it? Dan Hausen, Paul Dan Hausen, this fucking guy over here, son of a Richard Jewell, son of a bitch. Apparently, he's just been cast in a Fantastic Four movie for Marvel Studios coming out next year. In a mysterious row, no one knows nothing about. I think it's pretty obvious that a Richard Jewell motherfucker like this guy is probably going to end up being the stupid little robot voice, Herbie. 
you know? It was either going to be him or Aquafina, but Aquafina already plays a character in the MCU, so they can't have her do the voice for the robot, but I would have preferred Aquafina to be the voice for the fucking robot. In fact, they should just call me to do the goddamn voice for the robot. Hey, Mr. Fantastic, would you like some tea? I'm the perfect voice. I already sound like a goddamn robot and shit. I'm just saying. Paul of Danhausen over here. Apparently, he's going to be some kind of character in this shit. There are some rumors and leaks coming out, which are pointing more why more speculations are now saying that this guy might actually be playing the Mole Man. And the reason why is because the new leaks are saying that when this movie starts in the very beginning, it is literally a fight between the Fantastic Four and the Mole Man, and they actually defeat him. And that's how the movie starts. So he could just have one glorious five-minute cameo fighting the Fantastic Four in the beginning of the movie. And then we never see him again. That's also possible. Uh, if that's what he signed up for, he's an idiot. And I would have been like, no, I want to voice the goddamn robot who is going to be in the whole fucking movie. Give me more money. The fuck you're going to make me a character they kill off in the first five movie? First five minutes of the movie. Fuck you. I want to be the robot. They make toys. Get some... Some money, some residuals at the end of the year. Hey, you sold a little robot plush toy? Give me 25 cents for that son of a bitch. Because every time you squeeze it, that's my voice coming out of it. And shit. But let's be honest, this Richard Jewel motherfucker looks fucking dumb as fuck. And he probably settled for the mole man. Five minutes of fame, you dumbass. Here's your $20,000 check, you idiot. I make that in a year. And you got it for five minutes, you dumbass. Cheers. Anyways. We got some new spoiler plot details. For Capitan America. Part four. The brave new world where American heroes are black. That's the, the working title. They're still trying to shorten it. We got plot details for Captain America 4. And they're saying that apparently... The movie used to be about the leader making an army of Hulk... Hulks to fight and shit. Experiments. Uh, but then Kevin Feige said this is ass... And he took away the Serpent Society and he took away all that shit and he rewrote the movie and they reshot it and then they're reshooting it again this summer to add more stuff to it. The new story is now part of the story from Thunderbolts. Because Thunderbolts is another movie that was completely overhauled and was changed and was changed when Feige came back from wherever the fuck he was. Thunderbolts got changed from being about uh, them going to get adamantium or vibranium from Wakanda. It got changed to them and fucking getting uh, the sentry from somewhere. Well, now this movie's being changed because they're saying that they're finally going to address Tiamat, the eternal celestial being sticking out of the fucking ocean. And that the governments are exploring this new land because this thing is so huge sticking out of the fucking earth that it's basically a piece of land now but the first governments to arrive there are the goddamn Japanese and the goddamn Japanese apparently they take pieces of the fucking celestial back to Japan and they figure out this metal is a strong metal that cannot be destroyed and they call it adamantium and they figure out how to liquefy it and how to, you know, mold it and, 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 and shape it into metals and shit and to make it adamantium. The Japanese figure this out. 
And then that's why, oh, oh, and the leader, the leader, which is the Hulk villain, even though the Hulk is not in this movie, Bruce Banner, they're not. The, the leader steals the vibranium from the Japanese to use it for who knows what. They're going to say that the vibranium also absorbs the gamma radiation so they can use it against to fight Hulks. To fight the Hulk. And shit. Uh, I keep saying vibranium. Adamantium. The adamantium. Because they, they, this is how they're bringing adamantium. And so then this is why the U.S. government sent Sam Wilson. Because President General Thunderbolt Ross... Harrison Ford and the US government want this medal and they want it away from all the other governments they want it only for the USA so that they can start the Weapon X project so this is where we're going to get Wolverine we're not going to see Logan on this I think maybe we might see an end of credit scene that teases that the government is going to now that they have Adamantian they're going to tease at the end of credit scene that the government, U.S. government, is going to start the Weapon X program. Um, or, you know, weapon program, because it's weapon one, two, three, four. Wolverine's just the tenth one subject. Sabretooth's in it, and a bunch of other motherfuckers are in it. A lot of motherfuckers were created from the weapon whatever program. But I think that's what this is leading up to. This is leading up to finally getting an origin to the MCU's version of Wolverine. Not Hugh Jackman, not the Deadpool one we're seeing. This is finally going to be our Wolverine's origin. This is where the government gets the medals from, and this is where they will indeed uh, find uh, make Logan from. That's the current fucking new rewritten story. For Captain America 4. That we're going to see. Stuff involving Hulk villains and the Red Hulk. And yet no Hulk or Bruce Banner in it. It's just puzzling to me. But oh well. Anyways. Uh, moving on to more ass from the Captain America set. We do have some actual leaked. Finally better image of the Red Hulk. Harrison Ford. And it looks way better than this piece of shit Drake. Out of shape Drake one that we had last week. This one looks better. It's from a t-shirt or a cardboard. Some kind of imprint. And he looks better. He looks more like the Hulk in this one. An ass. He looks a little bit like an angry Harrison Ford. So I could see that for sure. Much, much better. I really want to see the final, and we're going to get close to it, and I, I, I'm going to show you some more leaks, but we're going to get super close to seeing the Red Hulk. In the next week or two, we'll have an actual fucking HD image. Not HD image, but an image, you know, at least enhanced, but we'll have the actual fucking thing soon, if this is the kind of shit that's happening. Because we did get more leaks, apparently, coming. Um, from more t-shirts, but Captain America, Anthony Mackie is going to have a helmet at some point in the movie. Either, which to me doesn't kind of make any sense because he's been flying without a helmet since the Winter Soldier. But then I'm thinking maybe he's flying at really, really high altitudes like almost close to space that he has to wear the helmet with oxygen. So maybe there's going to be a scene and I don't even know why he would be somewhere up that high. Um, so we'll see what the fuck this is. Maybe he's going to infiltrate another country, Japan. And so they send him on a fucking, you know, one of these, the Aurora plane that passed through here last week. They send him on that, and then he jumps out of it from space. Now that would be fucking cool as fuck. I don't know, I'm speculating. But for whatever reason, at least in a scene or two, he's gonna actually wear a helmet. A blue, white, and red helmet with an A on the top for America, motherfucker. Yeah. 
It should say MAGA. <laughs> Cheers. We do have more leaks. Of course. Coming from none other than fucking McDonald's. Because if you go right now and you buy the McDonald's Happy Meals, they give you the Captain America toys. The movie didn't even come out. Till, I don't even remember when the movie comes out and already there's toys and shit. When the fuck does this movie come out? Now that I'm fucking curious about this uh, uh, brave new world. When the fuck it releases and shit. Uh, fucking stupid ass Google. Feb wait, it doesn't release till next year. That's a bullshit. It doesn't release till next year, in 2025. But somehow McDonald's, right now, if you go and buy a kid's Happy Meal, they'll give you toys for the movie. They'll give you a Red Hulk, a Sam Wilson, or this fucking asshole, the Falcon. And and yeah, this is the new Falcon, Joaquin Torres. Coming at you live, HD, right here. Uh, basically the Falcon, but in green for the Army. Because he's the Army, and he works for the United States Government Marine Corps. The Falcon in the comic books was actually a guy who got mutated. And he's kind of like a half-bird, half-fucking man. His wings are actual wings that are on his arms, and they're not mechanical. Um, but at least they kind of made him look that way. Oh well. But Jose Trevino, I don't, you're not there anymore. I, I don't know if you are. But here is your first HD look. Well, now we have better looks, but this is all the picture I have right now because I got home late from work today. So I didn't have the new image that's from the Empire Magazine. Fuck you. But this image from the McDonald Happy Meals, the new Sam Wilson, Anthony Mackie in his blue. No longer really white. Because. The color white in America nowadays is bad. We need dark brown colors. So we got the dark navy blue Captain America new Sam Wilson right here. And god damn you, like I said, this motherfucker's fat as fuck. There it is right there. His stomach showing for the whole world to see. And it's not a disease. It's the fact that Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige, I'm not even going to blame it on Anthony Mackie. I'm going to straight up say it. Marvel Studios, Disney, and Kevin Feige are a bunch of fucking racists. Because they fucking pay. And, 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 and support. And give Chris Evans and Chris Hansworth and Paul Rudd and even Robert Downey fucking trainers. And fucking uh, dietitians and dietitians and motherfuckers that tell you what to eat and when not to eat and all this ass, when to sleep, when to wake up, all these guys and shit, women, these motherfuckers over there from Russia, the motherfucking German motherfuckers that are ripped as fuck, and they teach these motherfuckers and they get them fucking training and shit. Kevin Feige, Marvel and Disney. When they fucking signed this guy to be Captain America, they're all like, should we get him a trainer or dietitian, all these motherfucker nutritionists, all this shit? Nah, he's black. He can just do 10 sit-ups before we film. He's good to go. That's what they said. Those motherfuckers. Then what happens? Not everybody's built like fucking uh, Kang the Conqueror or like Michael B. Jordan. Some of these motherfuckers actually have to go to the gym for at least four hours a day. For them to get in shape. Anthony Mackie. Them motherfucker going to Chili's every night. Going to fucking uh, Outback Steakhouse. Getting that onion blooming onion and shit. Dipping that shit on that ranch sauce. Taking shots. Fucking redheaded sluts every night. After filming some show. Cause Twisted Metal. Fuck you out. You could never. Never hold a candle. To the great and beautiful Chris Evans. This son of a bitch. Could pull three, four women. I used to see him get out of clubs down in Hollywood Boulevard. Get into his fucking two-seater convertible. And then four bitches 
one on top of him and then three on top of each other and he drove away with all of them all all on top of each other he could go fuck the shit out of all of them fuck you anthony mackie you could never 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 be chris evans with this chiseled beautiful body looks like a fucking greek god fuck you that's my captain america that's all i'm gonna say fat anthony mackie fuck you Cheers. <sighs> Brand new rumor just came out talking about Avengers. Because apparently we have the brand new lineup to Avengers 5, unti currently untitled because they don't know what they're going to do with Kang the Conqueror. Motherfucking uh, woman beater getting community service. Here is your new Avengers team for the next big movie. Anthony Mackie, Captain America, obviously. Tom Holland, Spider-Man. Moon Knight, out of fucking nowhere. The Hulk, Bruce Banner, and his cousin, she-Hulk. And that's it. That's your new Avengers for Avengers 5. Ah. Look, you started off good with Mackie and Spider-Man there. You definitely need both of them there. When they said Moon Knight, this threw me off so bad because what the fuck does Moon Knight have to do with anyone at all? He's not fit or qualified to be an Avenger because this guy's out of his mind. He has three personalities. He doesn't know who he is. And he doesn't know how to control his powers. And there's a god inside of him who also fucks with him too. Why the fuck would you want him and a team to try to save the world? Hey, what's how? Why is this guy on the floor having a seizure? Oh, I don't know. I think he's talking to his other self. Fuck you. Why is Doctor Strange not in here? Or Scarlet Witch Wanda? I get it. The Hulk has to be in there. Bruce Banner. She-Hulk. Fine. She comes along. Tags along. Where's his son? Is his son's going to have three Hulks? His son? Because we saw him with a son at the end of it. No explanation. No reason why. So there are going to be three little Hulks there? I could build a better Avengers team and a better movie right away. Anthony Mackie, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, little Kamala Khan, and fuck it, little Hawk Girl. That's all you need. That's a well-rounded team right there. Different kind of pop. This is like insanity. Oh, this is lame. They're saying that this is literally it for Avengers 5. This is the new Avengers team. They are keeping it small. They don't want a gazillion heroes with a gazillion storylines. Mostly. And this is the goddamn truth, Kevin Feige. And you know it, you dumb son of a bitch. Because you can't tie none of them into this movie. You can't figure out a way to tie in all of those characters you've introduced in this f past four, phase four and phase five. There's no way for you to fucking tie in all of those characters into this movie because you never did it. None of the end of credit scenes led into the other movies. None of the characters bled into the other movies. Nothing was connected. Because if everything had been connected, all the characters, everything, the series, everything would have bled in slow, slowly, one character off to another to passed on, and so on, carefully woven like the last fucking franchise you did 20 years ago. If all of that would have been just like that, 
than having these Avengers and having all the other characters in this movie as the new Avengers would have made sense. But you can't. Because they're all doing their own thing and nothing is connected and no one even knows who exists and who isn't real. Shit. And now we have this. Fucking... Dumbass, fuck. This is, this is, I, not even the comic books has ever had an Avengers team that was this lame. It's like, you don't have any ideas? Oh, let's just put two Hulks and a crazy guy with Tom Holland and Anthony Mackie. Poor Tom Holland. He did so good being Spider-Man and doing all those movies, having all the success. And he's about to jump into ass for millions of dollars. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I would do it too. I would jump right into ass for millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. All right, we're done with this bullshit because it's pissing me off. Let's get on to some real leaks. And we got another than some Deadpool badass leaks. High definition leaks of baby Deadpool and kid Deadpool for Deadpool 3. And uh, baby Deadpool or baby pool, as he's going to be called, looks like the stuff of nightmares. Like a Chucky doll. <laughs> it's just scary looking as fuck. And instead of guns on his holster, he has little fucking bottles. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fucking crazy and shit. A little baby wearing a tight leather suit. And then Kid Pool kind of pisses me off because why is this kid built weird? Like in the middle? Like this kid like has been fed nothing but McDonald's and shit. But I guess because it's been like fucking he's Deadpool. He's going to look weird looking. He's a young version of Deadpool. So he's an out of shape kid. With knee pads and water guns. Instead of guns. And a hoodie. So these are high definition. Of. Baby pool. And kid dead pool. Kid pool. Is what they call them. Uh, I got some more high definitions. Of the hideous. Head pool. And that disgusting. Dog pool. That alopecia little dog. Fucking disgusting skin. No teeth. That's why his tongue sticks out like that. But head pool. Uh, looks creepy as fuck. You know what it reminds me of? There used to be a game on the Sega Genesis that I played as a kid. It was called... Oh my god. Headball and Eddie. Skullbutt and Eddie. Oh my god, it's gonna drive me crazy because I can't fucking remember what it was called. Uh, and, and. Uh, Dynamite Hetty? Was it Dynamite Hetty? No, it wasn't Dynamite Hetty. Oh my god, I can't even remember. Oh, uh, it's not Dynamite Hetty. It was a it was a game like Dynamite Hetty, and you would throw around a skull and shit. And that's what this reminds me of. Uh, from Sega Genesis, the the head pool. He looks creepy as fuck. Creepy as fuck. I hate the little dog. <laughs> Cheers, Gomer. Sorry about that. I hate that little dog. It's disgusting as fuck. Um, it, but I'll tell you one thing. It's got all these nipples hanging out of it too and shit. It's nasty. I ain't gonna tell you one thing is that this stupid little dog is going to have more screen time than any of the badass cameos and, and actors that you've been waiting to see in this Deadpool movie. And I'm telling you why, because in these new Empire magazine that's come out, that's on newsstands right now, this little dog is in every picture with, they're holding him. This, 
disgusting bitch. But it is a bitch. Look at all those nipples. Um, it's gonna have a lot of screen time. It's fucking stupid. It's gonna piss me off. This is like those fucking goats from Taika Waititi and shit. But anyways, uh, they are doing reshoots in the month of May for Deadpool 3. And they're saying that all the reshoots are going to be all the cameos for all of you motherfuckers out there. A lot of the extra ones are adding. And they said already that they know for a fact that Kevin Feige has gotten Wesley Snipes to come be Blade for a cameo scene in the fucking Deadpool Wolverine movie. When they're jumping through universes fucking shit up before, before they end up in the void. Before they end up in the void, they're going to be running away from the TVA and Deadpool and Wolverine because he's got them with him. They're going to fucking be jumping into movies that we've already seen. That's where all the cameos are probably going to be. That's why we've seen Deadpool killing uh, TVA agents at the Avengers Age of Ultron in the snow. So we're about to see fucking Wesley Snipes Blade cameo in Deadpool Wolverine. Oh yeah! <laughs> Is what I would be saying if fucking Wesley Snipes didn't look like a cancer patient right now. God damn it! Kevin Feige, you ruined it! You waited too goddamn long! Wesley Snipes literally looks like fucking doused him from Street Fighter right now. You want him to come out like Blade? Like he used to come out in his prime? Looking all fucking badass, ready to fuck up some vampires and do some backflips and shit? Fuck you! Look at the fuck he looks like now! This was taking probably last month! Fuck you! He looks like a goddamn ghoul! Taking old Zampic. He's a vampire and shit. He's probably gonna be a vampire version of Blade, not the real Blade. We need Mahershala Ali Blade, not this fucking son of a old, washed up. Fuck you. You don't have it anymore if you look like that. Son of a bitch. You're done. The worst cameo they're getting. I can't even believe the more ass they're gonna bring into this Marvel Cinematic Universe, you motherfuckers. Yeah. Get ready for this ass. Fuck you. We're done. <laughs> We're moving on to the final ass. And it's not another. X Men ninety seven Tolerance is Extinction Part One. It's good. It's still not as good as the climatic episode five, which was the best. But this one's good. And it's barely part one of part threes. So there's two more that are going to be even better in this first one. But they are following the comic books or much like the original X-Men 94. They're borrowing and changing stuff. And the main, I, I knew it was going to be Bastion. I just couldn't remember his name. I knew it was this guy who was like a cyborg and he's a cable villain. Uh, and he was, uh, he's the reason why anything got started. I mean, it's a, it's a loop. In the comic books, it's a weird loop. Because Nimrod comes from the future to the past, finds the destroyed Master Mold, fuses with him, 
becomes Bastion, and then Bastion makes the Sentinel program that then makes Nimrod. That's the comic books. So it's like a circle, a never ending circle. It repeats itself. No way to stop it. They didn't do this here. They say that, I don't know, they, they didn't really kind of explain it. They kind of half explained it, but showed some kind of virus going into the body of Bastion's dad. And so then Bastion fucks his mom. And the, the, I guess the virus is Nimrod. And then when, ba when, when this guy fucks, ba you know, the, the mother, he passes a sperm and the traits into Bastion's mom. And so here, they're saying that Bastion is actually a mutant with Nimrod powers or the consciousness of Nimrod. I, just, I don't know. This is why they changed. They shouldn't have done this. They should have just made, kept it that Nimrod fuses with Master Boat and, and, and creates this cyborg human that's not real. But he's a mutant in this one. He's actually a human who's a mutant, but somehow with the consciousness of whatever, of the robot or whatever. Um, the unoriginality of this whole thing comes with Be Be Bo De Mayo, the son of a bitch who got fired. Because, and someone pointed it out, and I'm glad they did on Twitter. Unoriginality is that he literally takes a scene from Zack Snyder's Man of Steel and recreates it. When Bastion is relieving his powers about machines and shit. And it's like almost scene by frame by frame. And it's like, fuck you. You're not original enough to come up with your own shit that you got to copy. Oh, let me do this so the Snyder fans can get excited and we get more views and more clicks. Fuck you. That pissed me off. It really did. Because it's like, come on, man, no originality. You're you're changing the story to be original. But then your visuals have to be fucking taken literally scene by scene from somewhere else. Fuck you, Bo DeMille. That's all I'm going to say. Anyways, so Bastion is some fucking music and shit. Uh, a mutant. He's a mutant. And he grows up and, you know, of course... He hates mutants and does all these things. Uh, but the crazy part is that, you know, he's got Magneto there. I thought he was going to turn Magneto into a, a cyborg, but he didn't and shit. But he's talking about his evil plan. His evil plan is to turn humans with the same virus that he got transformed into. And Sinister has helped him create it now. Because, you know, that came from the future. But obviously now they're saying that Sinister helped create it. And he dips humans to turn into sleeping sentinels. Um, so those people are no longer people. They're like androids. Uh, but while he's talking about his master plan to take over the world, there's all these, you know, uh, TVs because he's having a conference. You would think with the Illuminati or something like that, some evil people. And all of a sudden, cameos galore. Dr. Doom is there and kind of telling him this is a good plan to take the mutants out and shit. <laughs> oh, like what, Dr. Doom? And then all of a sudden, Baron Zemo out of nowhere is also there, like talking shit and saying, like, that's a good plan. And I don't know what. And uh, I, 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 I don't know. I think there was Madam Hydra or some other chick was there. Uh, but cameo galores i was like these sons of bitches they actually added a bunch of cameos from other fucking universes and you know like this was never a connected universe but now it really is in next men 97 this is cool because it's also the designs from the other cartoons from the iron man cartoons that captain america they're using the same designs from that that they were using so that's kind of cool so yeah they dip the humans that they capture or kidnap and transform them into sleeping sentinels where one day they'll wake up as sentinels and they'll no longer be humans. And this chick, you know, is seeing what they're doing and shit. And she's kind of like, 
like this is bad like maybe this isn't such a good idea and she's having second thoughts and whatnot about all the shit they're doing uh, but, you know, Bastion's all like, this is for humanity because, you know, humanity, we're going to be, the mutants are going to overrun us. And we have to overrun them before they overrun us. If this is the survival of the fittest. Um, Cable, Gene, and Cyclops get into this little adventure where they're, that's where they learn Bastion's origin. They go looking for his origin. And Bastion's mother turns out to be a sleeping sentinel in everyone in his hometown. And... From there, all the sleeping sentinels wake up. All of them. Um, the ones there, the ones at the X Mansion, the, the, the leftists, they were all protesting outside of the Xavier Institute. Oh, some of them start turning into sentinels. They start waking up and they start fucking all of a sudden taking off to attack the X Mansion. It's fucking nuts. And all hell breaks loose. And there's cool scenes. Wolverine has badass fight scenes. Nightcrawler has badass fight scenes. There are so many cool stuff that I, I did enjoy. And I said, this is cool. This is better. The animation actually looks really, really prime in this episode. A lot of the fighting looks really prime. This is just like episode five. That was just really, really well done. Um, And it looks cool. The Nightcrawler stuff looked amazing. Um, They save Rogue and all these Sentinels attack and shit. Um, but what ends up happening is the lady actually turns on Bastion and she ends up fucking saying, you know what? She looks at Magneto and she sees that Magneto has the fucking tattoo from the Jews because he was in the Holocaust. And she says, this is fucked up because this is literally history repeating itself. And so she sets him free. Because she says, we're doing it again. Just like, you know, he got persecuted for being a Jew. Now he's persecuted for being a mutant. History is repeating itself and we got to stop it. And she says, Magneto was right. Like, fuck the humans. And she lets him go. And so Magneto goes to the North Pole and sends out electric magnetic waves. And they don't explain this. I think... He set off an EMP worldwide and no more, no more electronics. Everyone's back to the Stone Age. I think that's what Magneto just did. They don't explain and they don't say, but that's what it seems because everywhere all around the world. And then all of a sudden more cameos, by the way, more cameos galore. We see Spider-Man 1994. That's gotten everybody riled up and saying, are we going to see a brand new, like just the way 97, Spider-Man 97, the continuation. We probably are. We probably are. I hope so. I, 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 that series I loved more, more than anything. That would be cool if they continue that story. But he was in there and he's freaking out in New York because all the lights are turning off and the earth is shaking but then in Japan, we see the Silver Samurai also freaking the fuck out. And everywhere, the electricity goes out and all the Sentinels turn off. Oh, yeah, Omega Red. Because they have Omega Red trapped asleep. And Omega Red is, is actually powering a nuclear power plant. And when it shuts off, he wakes up. And so he's going to be set loose. Um, And then Wolverine and is all like, Fucking uh, Magneto finally did it. And they're all like, what did he do? He stopped. He saved us. He stopped the, the Sentinels because the EMP killed all the Sentinels. They all fell. All the Prime Sentinels. Like, you know, they shut off. And Wolverine's all like, no, he declared war because he shut off all machines. When you think about it, it's an act of war. Bastion is not a, in this universe. Bastion is not a machine. He's a mutant. So he didn't get shut down. He's still alive. He just controls machines. That seems to be what his or understands machines. That's what his power is, I guess. It's so weird. It, this is different than the comic books. He's a mutant in this one. He's not a machine. In the comic books, he's a machine. So if this was a comic book, he would have been shut off. Bastion would have been shut off, but he's not. Wolverine says, where's Charles when you need him? 
And all of a sudden, a meteor crashes at the mansion. And they all run towards it. And of course, it's a spaceship. And it's Charles Xavier from the Shi'ar Empire. And that's how it ends. Because he goes, to me, my X-Men. This is a cool, cool uh, fucking episode. Like I said, uh, they changed it a little bit from the comic books, mostly because of Bastion's origin. And I get it, because if Magneto set up an EMP, and he would have done that, and Bastion was a cyborg, he would have been shot off too. But since he's a mutant in this one, he's, he's going to stay alive. Um, I don't know what part two and part three are going to mean. I think part two and part three are going to be more like the humans, being like the mutants are dangerous. Bastion's just gonna be like, I'm gonna lay low and let let this play out. I think that's what's gonna happen in the next few new ones. Um, it's all very interesting, man. Cause they are now at this point deviating from the comic books and kind of doing their own thing. And uh I'm interested uh how much they're gonna borrow and how much they're not. The next comic book art arc after this one after i think i think this one was called messiah the messiah complex or the messiah the bastion one was called something like that but after this arc in the comics follows avengers versus x-men and since we're already seeing cameos of spider-man and fucking uh, General Thunderbolt Ross, all these Captain America, all these other, you know, things that are in the universe. I think that season two is obviously still going to be connected to this. I think it would be a waste if in the, they end this. If they end this whole arc in the next two episodes. It would be a huge waste if they end it. I hope they continue this arc to the second season. Uh, like I said, I don't know what they're going to do. They're move they are moving really fast in these episodes. So maybe they'll end this in the next, you know, it'll be 3 episodes long the whole arc, but it'll end which would be disappointing. But the next arc, if they're following comic books, or at least continuity-wise, and they're borrowing stuff, but they're following the timeline of the comic books, the next arc would be Avengers vs. X-Men. Yeah. And then after that, House of M. But Avengers vs. X-Men would be so cool with these characters. Oh. They could even do the Onslaught. I would prefer if they went the Onslaught route. And they should do the Onslaught uh that would be so good to see wolverine as berserker wolverine or feral feral wolverine or whatever this was a it's a good it's a good it's a, it was a good episode episode five is still peak episode five is up here above every, everyone else fuck you i keep saying it episode five should have been the standard for all of them they fucked up uh the next two episodes are going to get better. I don't know where this conflict is going. They're not... From here on, they're not following the comic books. They've already borrowed enough. And now they're... Now they're deviating where we're, we're making our own story up. So I don't know where they're going with this. But it's got me intrigued where I think it's good. The, last, the next two episodes are going to be really, 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 really good. That's all I'm going to say. Motherfuckers. For sure. Uh, but cheers to X Men ninety seven. That's been not bad. It's not bad. I still don't. I'm not too keen on the animation. I think some of the best animation that I've seen have been in episode five. The fighting there and the fighting from Nightcrawler and Wolverine in this one was superb. Uh, the animation was flawless. It was really really good looking. I'll give you that. Uh, but. With that being said, I will say uh, cheers. And I think I have done enough ranting for today. So I will just come out and give you uh, 
Some life advice to take home from me. Don't be Mr. Hindsight. Alright, don't be that fucking guy. Or that fucking person. Alright. Yes! Your, fa your friend just got fired. Yes, your friend just got dumped by his girlfriend. Or, oh, he's not having a bad day. Or this, or that. But for fuck's sakes, when you see your friend, the first thing out of your mouth, don't let it be. Hey, how are you feeling about your breakup? Hey, how are you feeling about not having a job? Hey, how are you feeling about your failures? You idiot. Why do you think your friend wants to be reminded of his failures? Why? You're his friend. You're their friend. The last thing they want, they will go to you so that you can take them out of their problems and take them into another world and, and, and relieve them and shit. And all you do is bring them back to your misery. Fuck you. Don't be Mr. Hindsight. If you know your friend's doing bad, when you see your friend, don't remind them of their failures, you dumbass. Make them happy. Talk to them about anything except for the bad thing. Don't talk to them about the bad things that happen to them, you idiot. Don't be Mr. Hindsight. Don't be that idiot. Right? Be a good friend. Distract your friend from the bad things. Show them something nice, happy. Idiots. Anyways, that's my advice. For the idiots, you can't think. And shit, don't be Mr. Hindsight. Dumbass. Cheers! See you next week. Woke back. Oh, 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 live. What the fuck, man? Fucking running like lady, eh?